This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 716, Tuesdays. We've been talking talking about professional lives wrestling. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And we are back with you again, uh, talking wrestling or whatever form that may be pre-taped in stadium with fans, with fake fans, behind plexiglass, whatever that is. We're probably going to talk about all those things throughout the evening. But with me too, because I can't talk to talk about it myself. It's like drinking by yourself. It's sad and maybe you need to seek help. So I got my buddies right here uh, on the Mayhem Show. First of all, from Beacon, New York, uh, 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 from deep, deep in the Mad Mike ban- bunker, it is Mad Mike. Sorg, I... I, I'm at a crossroads. Uh, you're Cody Rhodes? No. <laughs> you've, no lost your, that, you, you've, right? then, you've lost your last name? You've lost your last name? Then I'd be giving myself the Intercontinental title. Oh. No, I, I'm at a crossroads because I don't know whether to finish Clone Wars or to finish Avatar first. Chat room, let us know. Yes, please. Advise me. There you go. Because I'm, enjo- I'm enjoying both, but all, I all, need a direction. Also back with us, and you may have seen him on uh, several programs and movies, but not as a corpse we found out pre-show. Uh, cameraman yeah. Rob is back with us from uh, Evan City. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I watched wrestling this week. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. I watched wrestling yeah. with you this week. Yeah. So it's it's yeah, it's yeah, a lot more enjoyable when, when it's it's not just sitting in my apartment watching you know a show with no crowd and <laughs> But but even that was taken care of with you know, other shows this week. The show with no crowd. <laughs> <laughs> also with us, straight out of Starksville. I don't know where where do I bill you straight, from? Straight out of Compton. Straight know. out of Compton. Ronnie Starks is back with us. Guess who's back? Back again. <laughs> Ronnie's back. Tell a friend. I love. I'm like. I'm like Ronnie coming back on. He's like, yes. I'm like, good. You have homework to watch. I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, uh, homework. And you're like, yeah. And I watched. I'm like, fuck you, Sorg. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be talking about that homework assignment from Professor Jacob Evan, and we got a brand new uh, homework assignment for you guys uh, oh, as no. well. But we'll get into all of that. Everybody's moaning. <laughs> It's it's okay. good. I think he has some words for you guys too in the next video. But anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com You can find uh, this and past podcasts and uh, all kinds of things going on. Uh, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast provider. Please drop us an email at Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com 412-206-WMS0 We had a problem with the email address again, apparently um, I, I got it it, it it works again, I, I tested it today So please, it? email it uh, Email us your favorite wrestling meme at Good Times I was waiting for it again Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com oh. Good times! There you go. Uh, so we can verify that it works consistently. You are helping us with our test audience. So there you go. Please do that. Um, Blame Google. What's that? Blame Blame Google. Actually, Blame Google. it wasn't Google's fault. It wasn't. I don't know if it was Hover's fault or Cloudflare's or it, or Google. or Surpass. We it runs through so many services, and it's actually the one that doesn't run through Google. That's probably why yeah. it didn't work. Um, but anyways. Not a commercial or back thereof for any of those. Trampoline and pool. What? Oh, this is a different question. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> at Mayhem Show. That was the that was the party on Saturday night. Uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Uh, face Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page group. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, if you follow Sorgatron Media or, or Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube, uh, Sorgatron Media Twitch, we are live right now on all of those. You can join us at 9 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday uh, live across those platforms. Most people over on the Facebook page watching us right now or in the group, 
but you guys can uh, whatever works for you whatever's easier for you throw on your chromecast or roku or apple tv those are all available for you now and after the fact uh if you are watching us live especially right now or in a podcast please give us a little give give it do us a little favor hit the heart button hit the like button hit the share button so you can help expand the mayhem uh, uh universe if you're if you're live with us right now on facebook you can hit a watch party it's all going to be very very helpful in getting us going um also please uh, uh do all that stuff subscribe to us rate us um and of course a thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show our friends following us at the fan of the show level Bo diggity Woo! and ed burke bobby f j town and team hammerfist and at the poppy club level bradley dave podner uh daniel towery and tina keys uh at the pizza club level our friends doc remedy and cal turner um uh occupy pro wrestling at the manager level and farnsworth investments and of course you guys please thank you so much for uh supporting us especially through these weird times right now um we, we, our crowd still shows up every week uh so <laughs> thank you Wait, for was that. that a futurama reference you just made farnsworth what? investments but that is one of our that's one of our providers, Farnsworth and Investments. Farnsworth. You know Farnsworth. I know, but like I immediately thought uh Futurama yeah, Star again. No, his name Good is news, Farnsworth. everyone. Good it's news. Farnsworth. It's far. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Carry on. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but anyways, as I'm dealing with some tech issues right now, uh, but <laughs> one of these is getting a message in a second as soon as I can divert. Anyways, speaking of crowds, crowds, I think, has been a big topic this week as they return to WWE programming. Um, and it looks like when I try to get my MTO at Sheets uh, and the <laughs> WWE's version of it. So, so... And this is a good conversation. And, you know, after last week, I, I took, I believe it was Tina's advice, and actually listened to the podcast um, that, where uh, Tony Khan was talking about the procedures, uh, about them doing these live shows and the live crowd, and how he got the idea for the live crowd because he watched Fallon when he had the writers come in and do it. And of course, you know, we had, you know, at the time Colbert did one without crowd. No, well, he did he had a crowd. Somebody did one without crowd and, and 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 everything. And that's why he was pretty big first off with those filmings. Um, to have that crowd, which really, really kind of stuck out to me uh, as far as enjoyability factor for me for what we've seen over the last two months in professional wrestling. Um, WWE apparently finally got the message. Um, they they shipped in, they tested, shipped in. Uh, 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 literally, I think they got everybody on a bus or, or something from from the from what I was reading that they shuttled everybody together, which makes sense to quarantine and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, so, so I guess I did not watch Monday night raw cause I decided to take a holiday from everything and, uh, hang out with some family and watch Gotham instead. Mike's happy about that, that decision. I'm sure yeah. he's nodding his head emphatically over on, on the, on the screen. Um, yeah. but, uh, I, 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 I only saw clips, so I can't really say the full feel of the show versus what I've seen. Plus, it's on Memorial Day, so that's always kind of weird. Uh, did you guys watch more of Raw? Did you guys get a better vibe from it? I, like, I, I asked today, and most of you were just like, yes, it's better because it's anything better than what they've been doing. Yeah, basically. Um, Raw, it was... <sighs> it was It was nice to see it was nice to hear, especially. Um, it, it was basically ambient noise. It wasn't. It wasn't mm-hmm. anything over the top like AEW is doing, where you have like um, people like MJF and Sean Spears like having bets and all stuff like that and gambling, or people or people like actually Oops. interfering in the matches or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like um, it wasn't it wasn't as far as that because honestly, when I watch AEW stuff like that, kind of upsets me a little bit because ev- also everyone in the crowd on AEW is so close. Yeah, yeah, they're very like everyone was very socially distant. Mm-hmm. Like they all had their own little bubbles yeah. to be in and, until the end, where where there was a pull apart brawl and people ran in from the so, stands. To- this is a question. Um, and this is kind of a broader question, probably than um, it, it was. Sorry, Rob's hooking up something. So if you guys hear a little bit of bumping in the background, uh, so so if everybody's being tested appropriately, 
do I mean we're already doing that so they can interact on the wrestling side are we bothered by them interacting as a crowd as well like I I, I feel like that kind of covers all the cases right but I feel like it's it's an optics thing because we can't be around people we're seeing it on television right uh Rob you you, you got something also yeah I was gonna say like I was gonna kind of liken it to like a laugh track mm-hmm. almost you know, as far as the reaction, like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a total rent a crowd, but they're reacting how they want them to react, yeah. which is almost kind of better. Well, it's better <laughs> than no reaction, but it's also better than when you've got somebody out there that's trying to play to a crowd and a crowd doesn't react or, you know, somebody who's getting, you know, like when they send Roman out there to do a big face speech and, and they're booing him, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's like it's it's kind of nice to to have people go out there and do what they're doing and have the desired reactions, I guess, you mm-hmm. know, it kind of makes that less awkward too, in a different sense. <laughs> like, like even when things are good, you know, it's almost like they wish they'd have a, have a crowd that, mm-hmm. you know, that did what they wanted them to do. Yeah. I, I agree. I, Mike, I agree with your, your discomfort on the, on the optics too, but yeah. It, it, and I'm with you too, Rob, because it did feel yeah. like it wasn't this the culmination of when we had the discussions, when the fans were offended at impact wrestling at Orlando um, yeah. because they were told they were basically extras in a show and shouldn't be, uh, quote, off script on some of their reactions and, and, but, and yeah. behaviors, right? But the vast difference in that is is that the people who are in the crowd on Raw, I'm presuming, are getting paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, like, at least... The, at the, least, people, at least... Who, the people who go to who went to Impact yeah. were not being paid, so well, they can react over the fuck. But, but they also probably weren't paying to get in either. Yeah. You, know, so yeah. It's, it's, you, you it's still have to still... pay park admission. Yeah, you but, have to pay but, park admission to get in. Yeah, but there's yeah, there's kind of like no yeah, like you said, there's no element of control. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, but they, I mean, like they're also thing there. Paid extra. Like yeah. they're also there, and they're buying merch, mm-hmm. and they're buying concessions. Yeah. So it, it's you know they're choosing to be there. They're not yeah mm-hmm. yeah being forced to be there. So that's uh, that one time not that my uncle and I went something. to um, <laughs> Universal Studios for Impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was free. They're like they line you up outside. They count how many heads there are. And they just they foul you in. Yep. yep. And they I, put I was, us, I uh, sorry, they put us right no. behind the uh, announcers. So mm-hmm. I was on TV like ninety five percent of the time. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I I went there for a pay per view for Victory Road. Oh, nice. And um, like we were literally because my dad didn't want to stand the whole time, so mm-hmm. we got the first row in the bleachers but, because. Yeah. Because I'm not sure people remember this back back in the days of the Impact Zone, all that hard camera side, there was there were no seats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was only standing room. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so um, but yeah, I mean, it, I thought it was I thought it was better than what they've been doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It made me feel less like a psychopath for watching it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, can it be improved on? Yeah. And it's yeah, good. like it, I, yeah. I, I would personally like it if they didn't have people out there I recognized, really, i.e., people, i.e., people that have lost to Charlotte. Plus, like, I know, yeah, I, I saw like Shotzi out there. You can't miss Shotzi, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. like <laughs> if you're gonna put Shotzi out there, you don't put her front and center by the ramp because then you're like, like put her in the back, yeah, or at least if she's gonna be out there, have her sit in her tank. Yes. <laughs> yes. Have her sit in, have her be in gimmick. Have her sit in her tank watching the show. That would actually be amazing. Shotzi um, sitting in her uh, tank, like throwing popcorn in the air and catching her or something like that. Like, be... no, like a drive-in kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> it's like yeah. like Malcolm Bivens could have been there scouting talent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nothing would come of it, mm-hmm. but he could be there scouting yeah. talent. No and way. He can also say this on NXT too, and it will alleviate a lot of this yeah stuff. but mm-hmm. well then what's going to be the crowd for nxt is a question too if they continue this trend um probably more probably more developmental people like yeah. that we don't even know yeah so 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 um i i think we so you you don't like that there's people you recognize on there right mike did i get that right i i don't be i don't because they're acting out of their character oh as a at, you know they're cheering or or whatever yeah, like, like along the script. I, like a to AEW's credit, I may mm-hmm. not like all the stuff that they do with their crowds, mm-hmm. but everyone in their crowds is acting gimmick. I'm with you. I'm with you. If, they're, you're, they're, if they're, you're a heel, you're rooting the heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Well, you know, things like the betting and things that like Sean Spears did, like that was fun. So the big thing, mm-hmm. like how I how I kind of illustrated this on on the post earlier today on the Facebook uh, group, uh, it, it, when you watch with a live crowd, there's a little sense of you know finding stuff right whether it be signs or somebody's dressed funny in the front row and they were just like look at that guy over there that's part of that uh experience i feel like AEW gets that a little bit like big swollen there was an article that 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 had the the comment after i i was saying it all saturday night on the pay-per-view about i just want big swollen every audience uh you know they're like big which article was basically like big soul needs to be in every wrestling audience (laughs) I mean, I'd rather have Big Swole in the ring. But that's I, just I, I just, I'm yeah. just, I want Big Swole doing anything. Let, I, honestly, okay, I'm just fair. happy with her doing it. I would love for her to be more in the ring, but I'm just happy she's doing anything. Um, but because uh, she makes all of the gold, to be quite honest, I thought she was going to start a fight during one of those matches, and uh, <laughs> when they got out of the crowd. But anyways, but the point is, um, I feel like, and again, I didn't watch all of Raw. It was I watched the YouTube clips to get a sense of what happened and how things were feeling. Um, like it was other than shots, you can't miss her. Like it, 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 maybe it was a separation because of the plastic or something, but you really didn't. It, it, they they were there in the background, but there wasn't that sense. Versus yeah. you know you get your pineapple Pete situations, big swole, Sean Spears. Uh, when you're talking to AEW, and we're also we're talking about different kinds of um lower well, tier well, audience. Also, like you also have AEW. The difference is like the announcers will point out exactly yeah. who is in the audience yeah. and mm-hmm. how they're interacting with the people that they're feuding with. But that's a philosophy, like, isn't it? Because a, a, a WWE would never, almost never re- recognize somebody in the audience that wasn't part of a story. Uh, unless, yeah. well, yeah, because it's like they're the ones that magically appear in the front yeah. row. And it's um, like, oh, I wonder if he's going to have something to do yeah, with Yeah, until, you know? until Cesaro <laughs> runs out in the crowud to kill your beach ball the night after WrestleMania. Uh, they're not going to acknowledge it, okay? Like I kind of think it would be interesting if you had the Raw people watch SmackDown, and the SmackDown people watch Raw. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I like and kept NXT, kept all yeah. the NXT and developmental to NXT and developmental. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. but have Raw watch SmackDown, and SmackDown watch Raw. But that's also asking a lot of the talent. I like that. So we got a we got a break in here. We got a break in. Not, not a break a in. We got a run in. We got a run in. Oh wait, did you grow up? Did you grow a goatee since I saw you Saturday? Who? No, 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 Man, no, no, no. I, did, oh, I did not grow a goatee, Sorgi. I lost the rest uh, of my beard. Oh, okay. That's what happened. So <laughs> I just, the beard you, was always there. You should have kept the beard, pal. <laughs> Wait, did uh, Mir- okay? Mirror Universe Matt has now entered the fray. That's the here. I have beamed in from the mirror universe and I'm here to tell you they also have no fans at their shows so you don't have it that bad but that's but that's not due to a pandemic just no one's interested <laughs> wrestling not as over over there in, in earth 2 yes. the earth 2 mainstream mat uh, he's here because of the crisis this is the real crisis uh, uh, don't get me started in alternate universes man don't, don't do that to me am I too soon I'm too soon. <laughs> oh God! I watching the Mendel effect crap, and now you're giving me multiverses and shit. Don't do this to me today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's, that stuff messed with my brain, man. Wait, wait, it, was that a messed... documentary? No, it was an actual movie. It was a movie, movie. Uh, okay, it's not Podner like the time. Says, yeah. Uh, Podner says, "Just remember, go, goatee is evil, Matt." Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Evil mirror, Matt. I could just see you. Did you watch the um? That Muppets movie where Evil Kermit, where he has a hood up, and he's just like eh, 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 eh. Muppets yeah. most wanted. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that's you, Matt. You're just like yeah. you're like yes. <laughs> I love it. Matt, Matt's, Matt's here to claim alternate. I, I always wanted to turn going. heel. I'm tired of being the hot baby face on this show. <laughs> that's the fiery young baby shut face. Down everybody's throat. Yeah, getting shoved down everybody's throat. They are sick of me. I can already feel that the merch sales are slipping. It is time to turn heel. Matt, can you can you make your background uh, black and white to be in the NWO? Oh, the, the black and white to either join the NWO or get into a Kevin Smith movie, whichever one works with the go-to. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah because uh, you, need, for, you, you need. You look a little like you're not supposed to be here today. Yeah. Yeah. You need way, <laughs> you need way more dick jokes for that. Oh, Dante <laughs> Hicks over there. Matthew yeah, Hicks, guys. No, we, we got Dante Hicks rolling in on the on the podcast. <laughs> okay, enough about uh, enough about Matt's facial hair, because that's a different show. Uh, <laughs> There's never enough. 
It's never enough. Matt, did it's you watch Thursday night? We will spend an entire hour talking about my facial. Okay. Hey. Okay. Listen to your parents. Tune in. Subscribe. SoccerTimeMedia.com. Uh, Listen to your barbers. Uh, Matt, did you did you watch the uh, fan edition of uh, of Raw um, comparatively to what you've been seeing on AEW lately? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I caught a little bit of it. Uh, very nice to see. Um, some fans better than nothing at all. But um, and I think I was mentioning to this to maybe to you and Rob at some point. Um, and it's like, and it's happening to AEW and to WWE now that they have their own kind of like pseudo fans in there. They're not like, it's not like a real crowd. It's like their ideal, you know, w- what their ideal version of their fan base would be if they mm. could just like train them to do exactly what they wanted them to do. You kind of like, get that too like they're very cooperative and they will go along with whatever and they will do what they're told to do um or, and, or, and that's just, good if you're you know making the show but if it also you know part of the fun of the wrestling crowd is that they don't always play along you know and they mm-hmm. kind of sometimes break the rules but, but sometimes like that can like i said that can make it like a real crowd can make things more awkward sometimes too like yeah. that you yeah. know so it's like, yeah, I, but, like i said i kind of compared it to like a laugh track almost <laughs> yeah, they're putting exactly. this where where they want it, the reactions to be you know it's like i get what you're doing <laughs> and it might yeah. make me play along a little more but yeah i did want yeah, so, to know there's just... definitely something kind of there's something definitely off about it and i'm talking about with both companies um but i will take it over an empty arena so yeah that's good. I, I did want someone to just randomly start a cm punk champ <laughs> Okay, you know what? I'm starting a CM Punk chant tomorrow at Black Diamond. Okay, yeah, yeah. Matches, I'm like CM Punk. So, so Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie, speaking of empty arenas, you have you will be returning to Black Diamond, who's been doing their shows over Zoom call. Uh, yeah, Zoom, which yeah, has been interesting. Cool. You were at the first one, so you're mm-hmm. the only one here who has been in an empty arena show. Technically, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. at least one that was intentionally. Inten- I say the, the, you're the only one that's been the one intentionally versus yeah. general. Te- in, in general. Te- I mean, I'm sure you've done practically empty arenas before. Uh, my whole career has been a giant empty arena. <laughs> I'm like, I, you know, I, like, so I mean, you, 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 you. So you know the vibe. <laughs> oh no, I know the vibe. It was nothing different to me. I'm like, hey, there's like five people here. Cool, man. <laughs> And, uh, let's, let's triple the house. There's yeah. somebody who's there's somebody who's not somebody's girlfriend or who's not a, <laughs> a parent. Somebody Whose who's girlfriend is this? Table. Yeah, Who's yeah. girlfriend? Yeah. There's, is al- there's this? always girlfriends and beast man watching off of the side. So you're just like, oh yeah, this is just how it usually is. Uh, I'm yeah. also doing another <laughs> uh, empty arena on Friday for Real Shoot Wrestling in Morgantown, West Virginia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm doing a bunch of empty arena stuff, guys. I'm actually really excited about Friday. That's gonna be a good time. That's our that's real shoot wrestling, and I don't know they share mm-hmm. there's some share some stuff in our wrestling ma'am show uh, group. So and I think they're doing a Facebook Live last I knew. So yeah, I'll share the I'll mm-hmm. share the link on my Facebook. So we'll give out uh, give a shout out to Tim on that. So um, yep. So it uh, of course it's West Virginia where uh, mm-hmm, it is an outlaw yeah. state. Uh, um yeah yeah. <laughs> So, John, Ronnie, do you have any prop bets with anyone who will be breaking out a pandemic-related gimmick or move? You act like I'm not going to. Mm. Okay, then. Do you, all right. Okay, then you don't have to spoil anything. But if no, you... I'm not going to. I, I actually have more class than that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope no one does. I hope no one calls it like the Corona Clutch or anything like that. Or... I'm Oof. waiting for the COVID nineteen driver. I, I, I think or, like, I say it. I, or like that fever three 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 or something. Yeah. yeah. Is that, what's that, Rob? Like, I was gonna say the Corona Clutch. That sounded like Crush's finisher back in like nineteen ninety three. That's that's. Okay, so I, I was you know when this first started, I had this like horrible thought in my head that somebody's gonna do like Corona on a pole match or something, uh, yeah. and, and then and then at the last RWA before the in March before the shutdown, uh, uh, Ryan Edmonds was coming out against uh, the Rev. And actually had Lysol, Mm because that's when we were just at the wash your damn hands phase of all this. So he was just Lysoling the fans (laughs) as much as possible. That was funny. Yeah, it was was good. Uh, So, like, that that's okay. It's like, but, um, yeah, I'm just, uh, somebody is going to cross that line, 
you know, at some point with it. But. I hope I hope they don't because I I would think that we're all more professional than that. But <laughs> some people think mm-hmm. heel heat is good heel heat. Mm-hmm. I gotta tell you, man, when you're but, making fun of something that's killed quite a few thousand people, that's not good heel heat, man. That's just yeah, classless. Yeah, stuff. you don't you don't Plus, do it. You don't do a nine eleven promo. You know. Yeah, it's just it's just <laughs> Rick and Morty. <laughs> Oh god, oh, I'm sorry. I just had that moment. I watched that episode. Yeah, that, a, you can do a Pearl Harbor job though. That's that's what they're bored. But nine eleven is too soon, man. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm really proud of us, Morty. I know, Rick. Like, jeez. Wow, Ronnie Stark's the master impressionist, ladies and gentlemen. I know that was terrible. Master, yeah. master. Oh, jeez, Ren. Ronnie. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if we can do that, Ronnie. Oh, let me tell you, Morty. We're gonna be okay, Morty. Don't be a little cocksucker, Morty. It's gonna be fine. We have uh, we have a fellow Dark Sage over in the Twitch chat room. Uh, what's up, our uh, Twitchers? We're uh, a lot of different places here tonight as we're live. Uh, <laughs> I guess since we're talking about COVID effects, uh, you know, kind of the wondering about will, will WrestleMania come back to Tampa? I, I honestly, I think it was a question whether WrestleMania will happen as WrestleMania even next yeah. year at this point because that's, I mean, that's that's a correct. I mean, that's a feasible possibility at this point things what is what is happening who's what are you pointing at over there uh the, the wife was behind matt oh, oh, oh okay. that's, why, that's why i was Jen, doing the turn around and look and he finally like got the hint and he's like oh shit yeah Jen was dancing First. behind. Matt i was just seeing a, i was just seeing a big like you pointing at the giant screen by yourself over here so i didn't know what's happening oh there she is oh, yeah. hello jen <laughs> there, there she is can't hear you right okay run in or- well, I'm just telling them that, like, the slightest Hi. glimpse of you, and everyone goes, Oh my god, it's Jen, it's Jen, it's Jen! God, Get rid of me, we want Jen! Everybody, put your pants on, it's Jen! Jen, wait, Jen, where's your evil goatee? I don't have, I, I just shaved. Okay. But speaking of, say, uh... you, you didn't take the hair from the rest of Matt's beard and fashion it into a goatee? You could have. You could have toupeed a small country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just like Rusev. <laughs> all right all right kid, kid wrangling is happening right now in the meantime want to give a shout out we talked about uh, uh some of our friends that are doing some some wrestling things uh we we are working on things i can say over at indie wrestling.us indie wrestling.network uh a lot of great stuff <laughs> a lot of great time to, to catch up on things giving a shout out if you haven't already if you have a roku device Hop over there and download the Grind City TV app. Our friends are actually uh, carrying in the indie wrestling feature uh, uh, show every week. New episode drops uh, Wednesdays at 11 p.m. And I understand the repeats of that episode are being carried throughout the week as well. So please go check that out. Support us, friends, and support the wrestling. Again, uh, if you if you have the opportunity, if you have the funds, um, a lot of these guys and girls are not, of course, um, um, hap, you know, uh, able to wrestle, uh, even though there are these empty arena shows, um, there's no fans to buy t-shirts. So, so that becomes an issue as well. Uh, so, uh, in the meantime, help them in this time, uh, over there, we have our COVID-19, uh, support page with, uh, pro wrestling tees. I hope you guys got another sale. Our friend Tatiana Rose has a new t-shirt over there. Our friend Chess Flexor, I think, I think it's a brand new shirt, uh, uh, page over there at pro wrestling tees but uh, he has his first ever t-shirt actually up over there that's on the wish list for me uh and of course please support everything going on indie wrestling network uh 5.99 a month uh that back catalog for rise wrestling every every produced wrestling show from rise wrestling is on there um as well as uh, uh last several years of renegade wrestling alliance black diamond wrestling for the last two years since we got on board with them um not including these um other these these zoom call shows you're gonna have to get in zoom to check those out we're not a part of that uh, there's, there's no association with that no association with that no no uh we're, we're still locked down in pa we can't do we can't do that just yet uh but uh yeah but we, hey i got i got some gadgets i got some lights on i got some temperature things we don't have any tests yet but hey who does uh we don't have the right aw here. budget but uh you got yours right there yeah yeah i got one of those in the mail today yeah yeah that's how you got to do it we got to check it when do we check it when people come in the studio uh, uh 
eventually. Uh, we're not having them. You know, we're, of course, still encouraging social distance in, in, in yeah, what, the meantime. What kind of person so. just shows up randomly at the studio? One I night? know. Yeah. Well, it just it just <laughs> comes by and says, hey, you want a taco? And talks to me for like three hours. And my wife is wondering, what are you doing there? And he's like, I have visitors. You're not supposed to. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that was a good taco, though. That was a good taco. <laughs> uh, so anyways, you too can save money so you can have a taco by uh, uh, supporting at IndieWrestling.us. Does that work? Does that math track? No, no, yeah, that math. no does that, that track? Okay. Do, um, do I get to make the, uh, the segue to something else? You can. It's probably better than my segue. Uh, you know what I'm hungry for? <laughs> What? Slice on Broadway. No, that's later. We just did an ad. Honey, we just did an ad. You don't do ad. back-to-back ads. You got let, me, let me know. Let me know when we make that segue, so I can make that. Okay, joke. I'll work on that. Right. So, okay. so I mean, there is a, there is a question, uh, just to kind of clarify a little bit, because uh, Alex is saying how California is reopening. Um, I, we we are looking at green stratus, but that does not mean crowds. That does not mean arena mm-hmm. gymnasium yeah, size like, crowds. Like I want I want to make that like that distinction. Yeah, go ahead. The NHL, the NHL announced today that if the season does reopen, they're going to do a playoff format in a few different hub cities to have like the playoffs. But those are all going to be fanless. Like, yes. No fans. Yes. Like You're... we are a long ways away mm-hmm. from having any kind of big arena show. I t- like I, t- I, I personally think that they um, – that what happened on Raw is a test, and that, that it's, gave me it's, another... just a, it's just a test to see like if they can let like twenty five fans in, give everyone like their own little bubble to to sit, like give everyone a chair, or if you're or if you're like a husband and wife or whatever, a set of two chairs, mm-hmm. and you have a larger radius to sit in the bubble, and where you can actually have real reactions from fans. I think that's. I think that was a demo. Well, I, I've to, always, see, to see what it would look like. I've always seen, I'll get to you in a sec, Rob. I've yeah. always kind of imagined, and, and it was, I was surprised this happened this week, because I kind of had this thought last week of, of I, I can see them just having, oh, didn't we say this on the show, them just having performance center crowd shows for the interim for a while before they start touring again as things mm-hmm. get to different whatever stages of what this is going to be. Sorry, Rob, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the, uh, yeah, the thing with, with well, you know, we were talking about, it's like, oh my God, what's WrestleMania ever going to look like again? Or, mm-hmm. you know, and they had the, but but seeing that hockey glass last night reminded me, <laughs> uh, um, if you've ever been to, or if you've ever seen or been to any of the like Winter Classic or outside NHL games, mm-hmm where it's hilarious because it's like, yeah, you're in a giant football stadium, but it's literally just like the ice rink out in the middle of the, <laughs> the field. And then nobody else for like a hundred feet, yeah, you know, yeah. to where it's, <laughs> to where it's like, can we do a wrestling ring at the 50 yard line? And, <laughs> and just nobody on the field. Well, funny I you should say that. Yeah. Funny. You that's what that. AEW did. No, that's, that's a good exactly segue. Yeah. What AEW but, did. Yeah. That was a fantastic uh, match, by the way. But, oh, and we were even saying on Saturday, it's kind of cool that, you know, like you can do something, you know, like, they, yeah, they did a show in the football stadium, but it wasn't like when you watch the old world class shows where it's like, <laughs> you know, set up at the 50 yard line where it's like, yeah, you got 30,000 people in there, but it can fit 100,000. So it still doesn't look great, you know, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. to where it's like, yeah, if you court, if you if you block it off, right, it's like, oh, yeah, it looks kind of cool. But, yeah, you know, and, and once you have people or more people you can expand as need be but mm-hmm. but yeah i just i just was thinking of just what a bizarre visual that would be <laughs> so, so which hey there were the there were a lot of bizarre visuals on saturday yeah, night was, yeah uh, uh, <laughs> so so matt we talked about the the kind of the precursor um before we get into the show let's talk about you had your social distancing pay-per-view party I'll see mm-hmm. if I can pull up some pictures as you talk here. <laughs> can, can you first talk to me, uh, and maybe this is a plan for you, if you have a wonderful open garage and backyard kind of setup and a television on Wi-Fi that you can connect, if you all these things uh, uh, tick a box for you, you can maybe think about that too. Uh, Matt, you you and Jen uh, were fantastic guests to make sure everybody felt 
uh, 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 spaced out and safe mm-hmm. and had arrows and knew where the bathroom mm-hmm. was and had something to sing in the bathroom while you wash your hands. It was Judas, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, I hum it to myself now every time I go to wash my hands ever since this past Saturday. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, uh, 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 Matt, how, how do you feel Saturday went from, from the logistic uh, point of view? Uh, yeah, I think it went really well. Um, we kind of um, we spaced out all our boxes. Uh, fortunately, we didn't have a lot of people respond, so we didn't get very close to our 25-person limit. Um, but, uh, yeah, everyone who came kind of kept to themselves. No food or drink was served by us. Nope. Nothing. We nope. provided nothing. We provided Clorox wipes, hand sanitizer, and a restroom. A place and to a sit. To, and a place to sit. <laughs> And then uh, everyone just came and sat, and there was like a, uh, a little trash can in a central location for everyone to hit um, with their things. And then we, uh, yeah, we set up the TV hey, in the, the way, garage. I, t- I took a picture. I'm not trying to take a picture of the trash can. I took a picture yeah. of the arrows, and the trash can just happened to be in the middle. That was the point. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was kind of. It kind of worked like a. Yeah. The trash can was kind of like a sort of traffic cone. Mm-hmm. Um. But uh, yeah, I, I think the uh, I think the traffic patterns worked out. I only caught a couple people violating the traffic laws uh, coming in and out of the garage. But um, <laughs> somebody said violation. violation. A lot of, yeah, <laughs> yeah, violation. violation. And uh, we, uh, and the, yeah, and the, I mean, the only people who really knows if it went well is like you and Rob and everyone else who came. So I mean, oh, you I guys it. had fun, and it I, was fun. I had fun, and. I wasn't you know? worried about it. Your kid was behind a cage in the uh, trampoline. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, was, so, he was properly secured. Yes, yeah, <laughs> having his own match, uh, his own ladder match in the trampoline. Apparently, so yeah, he's like wrestling the stuffed animals in the trampoline now. It's getting really out of hand. Yeah, yeah, but uh, really complicated uh, yeah, stories too. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be able to at least kind of like see a couple people now, and I feel like I've kind of we done a good job of training ourselves not to like you know high five or hug when we greet or <laughs> depart now you know we just kind of like it, it's really kind of like it's become very normal to just be like oh you're leaving now okay see ya bye you know yeah, there's, yeah. Nothing, it, there's nothing more warm warm or you know nurturing about it than that. just like okay see ya wave if you were yeah, a I fan know. of the irish goodbye before this you're in a good spot <laughs> so uh no it was fun it was fun and, and i love that we all completely just stood for the entirety of that main event uh yeah because, that was a good suggestion by you because you know as the uh as you get a little bit later in the night you kind of even i start to wear down a little bit yeah um yeah. and uh you were like you know we need to stand up for this one i stood up and that, that definitely added to the experience that was a good call by you we should that should be a rule just going forward for all wrestling shows whether you're there in person or you're watching at home you the main event comes on, you get on your feet no matter what. You're gonna stand for this main event, and you just you you add to the energy for yourself and for everyone else around you. And, That'd be a good role for when we all come back. If the main or event, or you can just be like the guys at the PC, you can just stand for all three hours, ugh. just stand there. Oof. You know, no thanks. good for them. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Uh, yeah, I caught some of them checking their watch towards the end there. Uh, so. <laughs> I just want to scream, take it home! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but they're probably just so scary because you know Vince is watching, so it's like they're probably all petrified, and that's probably why it's a different vibe. On, But anyways, you mentioned uh, the stadium match. Um, um, I know a lot of wrestlers not happy with it. Uh, some of the I, obvious ones, some of the others. One, a Jaguars fan that was not a fan of his be- – a wrestler who was a Jaguars fan who was not a fan of his uh, uh, football mixing with wrestling on Saturday night. Um, but I think all of us there were – enjoyed the hell out of it. I, I, I think after, the precursor is if you like being the elite in that kind of humor, you loved this match because it mm-hmm. was a high-budget being the elite episode match. Um, if you don't like I mean, that, if, you're, you if probably... your brain is willing to accept, you know, final deletion, mm-hmm. boneyard match, you know, maybe I should say Lucha Underground. We should lump that in there too. If your yeah, mind is yeah, willing yeah. to accept these different things where the, the pro wrestling, you know, genre gets kind of pushed a little bit further out, then you probably really enjoyed the heck out of this match. If you didn't like it if you felt like it's not pro wrestling then i don't want to be too crass about it but look there is no pro wrestling right now because there's no <laughs> pro wrestling with real fans right now this is what we get 
this is all we have right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So if it can just make me smile in the moment and enjoy it, and yeah, maybe I do later on go back and wonder how in the hell did Matt Hardy transform three or four times while his head was underwater? Well, but you know what? Who gives a crap? Because <laughs> at the time, I was like marking the hell out because the first version came out of the water. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I love that. As a matter of fact. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I love the whole uh, bar thing. I was cracking up so hard. When uh, when Swagger walks in and he's like, you're here to fight or you're here to drink? So they take a shot together like, all right, let's go. And they're beating the shit out of each mm-hmm, other. Mm-hmm. And then I love when Kenny Omega came in and uh, freaking... And then all the booze got in the milk and he's still drinking it anyway. Right, love <laughs> yeah, it's a black question. Dude, I was cracking up. That whole match. Actually, I enjoyed the whole pay-per-view. Yeah. It was good. Um, I I feel like after we discuss the pay per view, we should rank, um, the four cinematic matches we've got: the Stadium Stampede, Money in the Bank. That is uh, our big and Firefly Fun. That will be our big question for this week. Then we'll we'll okay. take care of that one after the break. Rob, you've been trying to get in. Uh, well, no, I was just saying how. Uh, oh yeah, with the the stadium match, it's like I loved everything with the horse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just the. <laughs> oh, oh, and the uh, the uh, was it the 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 rolling Northern Lights suplexes? The one mm-hmm. of the uh, one of the boxes <laughs> yeah. doing, yeah, where, like, yeah. suplex them all the way down the field. That was, that was pretty great. I will watch. Yeah. I will watch Sammy get destroyed and, all day, and I and, literally and, did during that match. And did, we, yeah. and did we get was one of was one of the versions of Matt, uh, like 1994 King of yep. the Ring, hold the door, jobber. <laughs> oh, I don't God. think we went that no, far. No, we, need, we definitely need that one to pop <laughs> yeah. up one of these times. Yeah, or the Hardy. Yeah, it was like the Hardy Boys when Jeff was like seventeen or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for high voltage to come up. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. I was waiting for. I was waiting for high voltage. <laughs> oh no, we poured too much. We poured too much water from the lake of reincarnation into the yeah. swimming pool. But the first part is the first <laughs> part it's is like, it's like the swimming pool from Cocoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, see here. Here's the thing. Santana and Ortiz should have come out as LAX. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They should have come out like somehow they're in their LAX garb from Impact. Or, or like, or how did this happen? And then they, they like yeah, rip it yeah. off. Or, or, or you were saying they're they're in they're into gimmick EYFBO, EYFBO or whatever. They, yeah, it's like entertaining your fucking balls off or yeah. something is the name of it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember they were. I remember when they were they were in town and we were like filming. I was like, oh, I've heard good things about this team, and we're just like, what the hell is this name? <laughs> yeah, because they fought. Yeah, because they fought the frat one of those times. Because yeah. they had the frat, and then like a revolving door of teams that weren't sticking around. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, like them, you know. Yeah. So it's like, oh, these guys are kind of cool, and then they pop up on Impact. Like, and the they year. were fun. And, you know, yeah. there was it was a good time kind of tag team, and then they get yeah. on LAX, and like they're so serious, I didn't even recognize them. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and then then you go back to this, and they kind of get to come mm-hmm. back to it. No, I thought it was a lot of fun. It was um, it was it it, it was a nice departure. It, it was uh, 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 like it's a reminder that hey, by the way, we also own, own the Jaguars because <laughs> yeah. yeah. they used everything and the little details. <laughs> like like when I think we the said last booth? week, we, 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 the replay booth. But uh, did you <laughs> notice when they were in the ring and in the background, you saw a guy with an inner circle shirt on and a playbook, and he's reacting and yeah. getting mad <laughs> and throwing yeah, it down on the sidelines. He's and coaching. I just yeah and I yeah. just knew I just knew somebody would have Gatorade at the end. Too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and there were, there were home cheerleaders and away cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and there's even a oh, Go ahead, Matt. Oh, I was going to say even when you were talking about the details, and I'm not sure exactly what this is referring to, but uh, apparently there's a very old movie called The Wrestler. Yeah. Or something like that. But apparently there's a bar scene in that movie that is almost like note for note what um Hangman and uh really? Hager did at the bar. Um, and they didn't like, I, I mean, I, like I said, I'll have to go back and check on it. I've only heard someone else mention it. So I'm cutting in I've, specific I've seen it second like hand. It's like yeah, but there's a lot stuff. of this kind of like, um, yeah, these little subtle things that they don't hit you over the head with that guy, that head coach in the background is perfect because they never like ran him over with a golf cart or anything. Mm-hmm. He's just there they didn't even for like a few and minutes and you're just like, what in the hell is this thing? And it's people, it's people doing their jobs too. You know, yeah. it's, not yeah. like, it's not like that money in the bank match where it's like, what the hell is brother love doing in a bathroom? On Sunday night? <laughs> it's, it's, well, I mean, to be fair, who would be working there on a Sunday night? Yeah, it's 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 like these are people that would be there at the stadium doing mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and yeah. acting like it's a football game you know. Yeah, I, I will say, 
I'm going to do my blanket statement and say JR is no longer needed on commentary. However, however, there was a reference. And if you had bet me a thousand dollars, if you told me this was referenced during that stadium stampede match and asked me which of the three commentators Mm -hmm. made the reference, I would have given you so much money because I would have lost twice. Yes. (laughs) When, when Matt Hardy stuffed, I believe it was Ortiz in the ice chest. Yeah. And JR (laughs) dropped a fucking foreigner reference. (laughs) (laughs) Like he legit did. Wow. That's cold as ice. Matt Hardy (laughs) was willing to sacrifice. I'm like, but to be Jim, fair, though, who wrote that for you and listen to them more? <laughs> I'm saying Jungle that's, Jack uh, Perry. That's but, that's but to be fair, Tony though, that is the a reference that's like 40 years old. You know? so yes, it's, but yeah. but still, that's modern for Jr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. well, yeah, he's just I, caught up. He just I did also laugh really hard. A reference to the Andy Griffith show. Yeah, so. I want to point out. I, I want to point out the commentary team on the match from 19, 1988 Great American Bash that we're going to talk about after the break yeah. um, is also Tony Schiavone and JR. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I was actually yeah. excited about that. That's wild. Now, now I think I that just, was the only part I was excited about, and then it just went downhill. From there. <laughs> we'll get to oh, that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> I'll work assignment later. But now I didn't notice at all because I was, wasn't really looking for it because you expect it in every JR match anyway. Yeah. But during during the stadium match, did he make more college football references than usual or not? Mm-hmm. Do, yeah. <laughs> okay. Of course. That's when he gets a yeah. let it go, right? Because like you said, you kind of don't even notice it at this point. No, <laughs> no. Oh, I, I tune him out completely sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but okay. Otherwise, uh, it, it, the show was fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't even remember what else was happening because that damn stadium match. But, but it was a good show. Well, it, was uh, it was a very good show. Well, I know we, we kept on talking about how it's funny that like a lot of these matches. I mean, you know, and guys do different things with their characters, and they evolve over the years. But it's like half the matches on the show are were like matches you would have seen on like Superstars ten years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah you're yeah, like, yeah. oh, here's here's Gold Dust versus Ty Dillinger. Here's yeah. Dean Ambrose versus Luke Harper. But here's yeah. Star- Stardust versus Vince yeah. Archer. <laughs> but, yeah, but they, they, they do it. Yeah, but Lance Hoyt. Yeah, yeah they do it. Oh my like, god. <laughs> The I didn't even realize that like, they right. forget their you, past. You know, you know they be... had a match on heat. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so how how? And speaking of which, I, I mentioned Big Swole earlier in every audience. I also wanted a picture and picture on Mike Tyson the entire time because just yeah. the joy of him watching wrestling. <laughs> yeah, is but fantastic. also the shot of it, the shot of him yawning that they cut to. No, oh, that was a bad time. That was a bad time. Can we it's north of fifty? So I mean, you gotta. Dude, he's jacked for his age, man. He's ready to go. Um, dude. Can can we stop with Mike Tyson? <laughs> can uh, we? Split the, no, no, we're, no, we're okay. no the, the, he's not a good guy. Uh, yeah, well, uh, if you listen, whoa, 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 like, granted, if, if you wanted to get all the people that were not good guys out of wrestling, we wouldn't have <laughs> wrestling. Yeah. And that <laughs> might not be a terrible thing. <laughs> man, we yeah. already Just got rid of the I'm... fans. Let's not get rid of the wrestlers too. Just because I'm a bad guy doesn't mean I'm a bad guy, okay? That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. But, I mean, but like, you don't have to bring him in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, he can be a fan. He can, and, like, he... And he is, like, a legit wrestling fan, at least. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, because he called Shawn Michaels heartbreak because that's his name. Listen, I know, hey, maybe not. I know maybe a lot of people. Cold Stone once. I'm like, did he just want ice cream? Matt, am I? Okay, there are a lot of wrestling fans. Have you been on message boards? Have you talked with just general public at a Monday Night Raw? It's not much different. Okay, just because so they're a big wrestling. We have to celebrate. It. Being a wrestling fan doesn't mean that you're knowledgeable in wrestling. Oh, Even true. the bare minimum, and and, <laughs> and 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 I say that with all love. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 and, and, but he was like he was like a big Bruno guy when he was a kid. Oh something. yeah, yeah. So oh like, yeah. yeah. So it's like I get okay, maybe like he 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 wasn't really nailing it on people of the era when he was there. Yeah. He loved like, know, but, What did he add to the match? Uh, he added nothing. Well, I mean, not, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that what they were doing was just trying to, like, you know, you're dealing with a situation where 
They're yeah. trying to pop. You're trying product. to get eyeballs on your product. You know, mm-hmm. you're trying to get some outside media exposure. And if yeah. Mike Tyson will take a certain amount of change to come in and hand over a belt, and that gets one or two outlets to to promote your pay per view, then you go for it. Now, I don't think necessarily work because I don't think you know they got a lot of traction on Mike Tyson coming in. But you know, he'll be back on Wednesday, and maybe he'll knock out Jericho, and maybe they'll get yeah. some buzz off of that. So I don't know. Um, also, but, I mean, you got to take your shots where you could take them. I, I don't know if it was necessarily. Like in hindsight, I don't necessarily think he was worth the trouble or probably the money to bring him in. But yeah. you know, in the run up to it, I'm like, okay, you know, I can see what you're doing. You're trying to, you know, make a dent here. You know, everyone's just glued to the news and not paying attention to much of anything anymore. So you gotta, oh. gotta kind of cut through all that to get people to remember mm-hmm. that you have a pay per view coming up on Saturday. Yeah. Can, can yeah. we also talk about that belt? So- uh. The final copy of that belt is dropping on Wednesday. But <laughs> then don't put it on your show. Well, they have, you to, have, have, to, have to have a match in. for it. It frustrates me to no end. You, you, know, you want to hand him a briefcase? Mu- they had a month for this fucking tournament that Cody just wanted to give himself a belt. It's exactly true. Tony Khan, Tony Khan, the map, the map out for the tournament was Tony Khan's call. Okay, he said so on the on the podcast. So you can't, you can't. But also, Cody just green screened it. I mean, you want him to hand him a briefcase? I mean, it was like like you you made the plan and it's a shifting plan they've already had to make concessions for over this which is a hard thing to do in production but now right. you have the belt maker that gets delayed because of coronavirus you've already said this thing is going to happen you already booked Mike Tyson and then things don't fall through on the thing it, well, okay okay but <laughs> conversely if WWE did this shit everyone will be shitting on it it, oh, yes. Uh, yes. 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 So Wait, we what? should be shitting on it. I, Not, I, whoa, I whoa, think whoa, that's whoa. presumptuous. Yeah, that is Look, presumptuous. Um, yeah, that's we we mock the belts that are finished. Like Rock Stars, the belts that are finished. Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, Ron Starks, you might appreciate this. What they should have done since the belt wasn't finished. Remember like in 1978 when they had to do the Star Wars action figures, but they didn't make enough? Mm. Yeah. The kids for Christmas all got an yeah. empty box. And it just said, you'll get your toys in, in the summer. They should have just given Cody an empty box. A golden ticket. Like, a golden your, ticket. Your belt will be in here. <laughs> Open up the box. There'll be a picture of the belt. It says, coming soon. Coming here's, soon, yeah. Here's, here's your belt. What should, here's what they should have done. Here's what they should have done. If the belt wasn't finished, if the belt was going to be finished for Wednesday, and you already had Mike Tyson lined up to show up live on Wednesday, you have the match go time limit draw, just like you did with Cody and Darby Allen. Then you say, okay, Tony Khan comes out. He's like, guys, I don't know what we're going to do. You have the belt like under a cloth because it's not done. So no one sees it. Then you say, all right, guys, here's what we're going to do. You guys are going to have a rematch on Dynamite. And Mike Tyson's going to be a special enforcer because let's say there was shenanigans involved with everyone around. You get Mike Tyson involved again. You have a match. It goes until there's a winner. And then you present the finished belt. Now we're complaining about things not being finished on a pay per view. <laughs> I don't think they Which expected problem? anybody to even care or notice the thing about the belt. I don't yeah, think they even thought it. about it. She's they said fighting. it. If the announcers I know they said it. it after the fact, yeah. but like, you know, beforehand, they're like, oh, we're going to have an unfinished belt. So just chill, all right? But, but everyone's freaked out say, over it. If they didn't say it, you wouldn't know. So don't fucking well, say anything. People would have just been complaining about it. Rob, I, please. I, I was going to say, uh, if, if anybody remembers when, remember when Ric Flair went to the WWF, right? And he had the real championship belt <laughs> because it was the still real in his possession. Until, until, you know, the lawyers stepped in and they eventually, they substituted it with something else and then did the mosaic effect, you know, to be like, oh, we can't show it, right? So... The uh, basically what I'm saying is the TNT belt until they had the, the <laughs> real one. It should have just been an old WWF tag team championship belt <laughs> that Cody has. That Cody that has because he held it. Around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got another idea. Here's another idea too. Yeah. All right. All right. You, you have the belt sitting out there, but it's underneath like a, a piece of velvet or something like that, so you can't actually see it. All yeah. right. They get ready to award it. Uh, Jake is so upset about the finish. 
He grabs the belt before anyone can really get a decent look at it, puts mm-hmm. it into the burlap sack with the snake and runs off with it. And then you keep it that's, in the bag with the snake yeah. until you're ready to that's fucking perfect. <laughs> that that's would have worked perfect. too. It's, that's so it's basically, perfect. It's, it's basically like the same as when, you know, oh, oh my God. Yeah, you know, like the, the fucking John Studd, Andre the Giant body slam challenge. Where yeah. Like, I've got this bag of money. <laughs> yeah. like, no, it's right in here. Yeah, but the bag or, never opens or whatever. So it's like, it's like no, just go with us. There's ten thousand dollars in there. Okay. It's it's whatever I, it needs to be that's in the bag. Is just I, in the bag. I have another it's Schrodinger's. It's Schrodinger's like, title. Belt, you know. Yeah. I have another suggestion. <laughs> After the match, after Cody wins, yeah. Um, when they're about to be presented the belt, Brian Cage runs out. Yeah. <laughs> He grabs That's- the belt from the cloth and just rips it in half. And they're like, oh, no. What do we have to do? <laughs> or the belt he's, is being obscured by that giant. He's been known head. to do that. Look, I um, you know, I watched the pay-per-view. And I looked at the belt. And, I, and I'm kind of one of the old school guys. I'm, I'm like, I like to consider myself like the last of the old school train kids, I guess. I don't know. And like I'm, I'm like, I'm like, okay. I'm like, that's pretty fucking cool. Like, I'm like, it looks old school. I'm like, cool. And I looked at it more. I'm like, wow, that belt's a piece of fucking shit. But, and, and I think I even, I think I even like made the, it's, you know, like we're like, oh god, it looks like shit. I mean, it's not the real belt, but you know, it looks like shit. But then, but I'm still, like, it was but, plain but, as shit. But but then we're like, but you know what though? The main belt in WWE for several years was a fucking spinner. <laughs> like, yeah, know, yeah. Even, even when it didn't spin anymore, they kept that. Well, Design, I blacked out the you know. years of really ugly fucking belts yeah. in the WWF. I, I like the spinner. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? I like the US spinner. I was a big mm-hmm. fan of the US title. Mm-hmm. I, I like yeah. I like the spinner when Cena had it and when Edge mocked it. Those both made sense. Yeah. And when R V D was Miz, happy to have it. R V D it was like mm-hmm. it spins. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's because he just likes shiny colors. Well, but the I, DJ, also liked it. I also liked it when Miz turned it upside down into an M. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That also made sense for me. Yeah, yeah. If, As long as you have someone who incorporates their character into how the belt is perceived, yeah, an ugly title can become an awesome title. Because let's let's be honest, the Smoking Skull Belt is yeah. ugly as fuck. Yeah. But God damn it, did it work for Stone Cold? Yeah. Brahma bull belt. So, yeah. oh, so that belt was like and, I mean, I mean, you know what? All 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 this talk is getting me hungry, Ronnie. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I really could go for a slice on Broadway. I, uh, you know, I haven't had it since the quarantine began. So, Sorgi, let's get some slice on Broadway soon. Even if we have to sit outside on the sidewalk, we're gonna eat that slice on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing the line of people picking up their slice on Broadway uh, when we're driving by here in the neighborhood here in Beach Beachview Beachview Beachview. Welcome to Beachview. Are people picking up the perfect pepperoni pizza from podcasts? Welcome, welcome to Beach Beachview, the home of wrestling podcasts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it comes together. Uh, you guys can get some pizza and bitch about wrestling too. Sliceonbroadway.com. Four locations at a ballpark that used to have sports and. Uh, <laughs> hey. Uh, you come for the pizza uh, stay for the sports if you're lazy uh east end carnegie beach view check what, them out what sports supporting pittsburgh like, podcasting yeah. we go with the perfect pepperoni pizza our friends slice on broadway.com guys we're going to be back with a lesson from jacob edwin what we learned Lessons. and a big question that we just previewed after you hear from katie and this sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Anderson! Mr. Anderson. I mean, of all the people who've, like, who's raised their stock? That, well, I, I mean, I'm asking a big question. I'm not supposed to do that. Sorry. Well, I, uh, my two spirit animals in professional wrestling. We'll save that for next week. Are Oscar and Orange Cassidy. Those are my two spirit animals in professional wrestling. So... I love me some Orange Cassidy. I liked him in the ladder match where he oh, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, I don't know what to do. He's like, yeah. He just stands. He and goes up the X. He's like, what do I have to do? Oh, dude, I was laughing <laughs> really? So hard. I really wanted him to win. He's like, ah, climb it. Uh. Which it kind of it's what's, what's funny is it's it's kind of a different take on the whole slow climb 
<laughs> bullshit. Like, like he's right there. Why is he going for it? Kind of, you know. Because he's like, I don't know how to use a ladder. He's yeah. like, I, I, I don't know how, I don't know how this works. Because because he was like the only one in the ring for like a good two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He easily could have won the match. Yeah. yeah. And like, I love that they're like, keep saying like, he's so pissed off right now. He's yeah. so pissed he has to do this. He doesn't yeah. know what he's, he's like, he just looks so pissed. And I was laughing so hard. <laughs> like, oh my God. I love AEW. I, it's you know, I can watch that every week, but if you guys try to force me to watch the Fed, I can't do it. It's it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're still chatting up here with everybody, and it is time for the big question. And and uh, we, you just uh, who was it, Mike? Mike, were you the one that dropped it here earlier yeah. in the show? That was that big question again. Um. Okay. So in the uh, love in the time of Corona, we've had basically four really massive cinematic matches. I'm mm-hmm. assuming we've all seen all four of them. Mm-hmm. Hypothetically. Mm-hmm. Um, the big question, Money in the Bank, Boneyard Match, Firefly Funhouse, Stadium Stampede. Rank them. May I start? Rank. Go yes. for it. Go for it. All right. Uh, Boneyard Match. Mm. Number one. Mm. Uh, Stadium Stampede number two. Firefly Funhouse number three. Uh, what's the other two? Money in the Bank. That's the last one. Oh, Money in the Bank was terrible. Ooh. Wow. But yeah, that's my that's my ranking. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna go Stadium Boneyard. Money in the Bank. Uh, Firefly. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Who's next? Go right. Rob. Go for it. Okay. Rob. I. Yeah, I would go stadium. You know, again, there like as we said, it was it was really fun, and there's a lot going on, and yeah, you know, just yeah. things. Uh, then Boneyard number two. I, I want to say Firefly Funhouse three, even though it really wasn't even just a match, but it was something where they took advantage of it not being a live thing. Mm. And then Money in the Bank was just so lame because it was just kick and punch down hallways. That's mm. you know there it wasn't was fun. A lot of, it was fun. Yeah. I mean, it was fun, but... but Did you say like, kick and punch? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, are you talking about a Zack Hunter match? Because that's all he does is kick and punch. Yeah. <laughs> Why wasn't he in Money try in the to, Bank? They, he didn't try to, to headline a pay-per-view with... <laughs> because cause, cause it's like, it wasn't until they got... Well, I mean, you know, there was funny stuff, like running into... Or, you know, like AJ Styles being afraid to walk past anything with The Undertaker on it. <laughs> you know, so, like... Like funny stuff like that, but everything was yeah, just kicking and punching. And if there was a table, maybe somebody would go through it. And then there was a food fight, you know. And just it wasn't until it really got up to the top where anybody did any actual like wrestling. <laughs> I'm just upset Paul Heyman didn't get a sandwich. Yeah, like how dare they not let Paul Heyman eat? I think he doesn't miss a lot of sandwiches. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, oh, oh. bro, I didn't miss too many sandwiches during the quarantine either. It's fine. He's a nice man. He bought me a bagel once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you, Matt. Uh, I will go uh, Boneyard just because, I mean, it was kind of first to the party, so it gets that benefit. And it was yeah, just yeah. like such a rush and just an assault on the senses to watch it the first time. And I will go Stadium Stampede number two. And then uh, I'm having a really hard time like deciding between Money in the Bank or Firefly Funhouse because I, I Firefly is just kind of like such an outlier kind of thing. Like, it's barely a match. Like, barely. Um, I mean, but like, Money in the Bank was just kind of like, just just kind of, was just so blah, you know? It just didn't, there wasn't a whole lot of spark in Money in the Bank. So, uh, just because, uh, at least I know that a lot of thought went into the Firefly. I'll go Firefly Funhouse 3, and I will let Money in the Bank sink to the bottom. All right. Uh, for me, I have Firefly first because that's as close to a character study as we're ever going to get for professional wrestling. Because mm-hmm. it was literally like it was it was Bray it was Bray Wyatt doing a thesis on John Cena the character, and it was amazing. And it, as far as it barely being a match, too, it's like it seems like it didn't try to really be a match. You see, no, so it's got that working for it. Whereas yeah, you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. And it didn't come off well. That would be mm-hmm. different, I guess. So I guess that's fair. Yeah, uh, two for me was Stadium. Um, 
there was a lot going on mm -hmm. in that match, like a lot going on. And I appreciated a lot of it. Some of it was a little too much. Like, like hangman just literally walking around backstage on a horse for about <laughs> 15 minutes of the match. Yeah. When it was very clear that Sammy was able to get back to the field somehow. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. But it, like, you know, then uh, wait, 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 Mike, got, Mike, I have yeah. an answer for you. He's been yeah. drunk in the woods for at least a month. <laughs> so have I. I would know where the fucking mat was, though. Yeah, <laughs> I've gotten lost in plenty of stadiums sober. So, all right, that's. I guess that's fair. Um, but number three, I'm gonna go Money in the Bank. Um, strictly for Oscar and AJ's PTSD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like because I I like the fact that it carried over. I like. AJ's character carried over from that. And uh, number four, I'll go uh, Boneyard. Nothing wrong with it, but the fact that Gallows and Anderson got let go almost immediately after it kind of sours it for me. Yeah, that's bullshit. It, 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 and that's the thing. I, I don't think any of us are really kind of shitting on any matches in this oh, order. No. I want to st yeah. state that. So, like, this is just the preference order. This is not a uh, yeah. I Boneyard think it's, suck. No, it's it's, it's, it's them since we've it's, had. Like, cool. It's like even with the money in the bank thing. It's like okay, they. I'm, you know, it was even if I didn't like the match so much, it was interesting that they went, yeah, that that, that they did what they did. You know, it's like it's let's go all around the building and do shit. You know? <laughs> yeah, Just, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Which, which, which that reminded me too, in the, the latter match on the AEW pay-per-view, like I, I know I was, I was thinking of it as the match was happening. They came out at different intervals, right? Like two minute intervals. What if yeah. somebody, what if, what if somebody won the match before? Uh, on, that was the danger. And that, that was would a possibility. have been too bad for those guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, like what if before Brian, like before Brian Cage came out, what if somebody won the match? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> the thing that pissed me off the most was that um, the two SCU guys started the match. Oh. Yeah. The, the Scorpio and Frankie both started the match. I'm like, mm -hmm. you guys are in a faction together. Like it, it's like if, if you have the new age outlaw start that match, one of them is winning right away. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, it's like demolition. Well, both well, coming it, out first at Royal Rumble. It's, and it's speaking, yeah. Speaking but of Royal, Rumble, Outlaws, you're they did. Royal Rumble, you're not guaranteed to win. Yeah. Rob. But I was going to say with the new age outlaws, I think there was like a pay-per-view tag match, like one of those multi-team ones, like three yeah. or four teams where all you had to do was pin somebody to win the match mm -hmm. to where one of them <laughs> did pin the other one. Yeah. So, so that they would win the match. And, you know? and then they, and then, they had, room or something? and then What's they that? had a rematch of that where yeah. they enforced the outlaw rule where you yeah. couldn't well, pin your partner. Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. I got we gotta roll back for a minute here. Rob, <laughs> what the fuck yes. is going on in your shot right now? <laughs> yeah, what are you watching? Are right you, now? I, I don't you, oh, I, you know what? I, you're, you're getting way too artistic back there. <laughs> what are you oh no, no! You know what it is? It's I guess you get the poster frame, yeah, in the background. But, but, but no, I'm getting a shot of you, and like yeah. you in the corner, and your poster behind yeah. you showing off the Punisher, Dolph Lundgren. Very impressive, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah. And <laughs> that's a good one. But but yeah, it's, I didn't realize it was reflecting my TV. No, 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 no. no. The point the is, you're segment. down here. The posters are over here, yeah, and I'm like, there, it's, why is he being artistic? On this I, podcast, I, I, it really <laughs> makes sense. He wasn't watching porn. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it makes sense that the match we were assigned to watch is yeah. reflecting off Punisher. Is Rob? Yeah. Is Rob? <laughs> Rob was is Rob making an attempt at a cinematic podcast? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. But had I, had I thought about it, Rob, I rank you as my number one cinematic of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie, did you give your list yet? Yeah, I did. Okay, everyone uh, did. Have, everyone did. Couple in the chat. There are Everybody a couple in the chat. Everybody actually had a different ranking. Uh, yeah, exactly. Alex in California says Stadium, Boneyard, Funhouse, deep, deep, deep down in four is Money in the Bank. He puts a big uh, line on that. Uh, that my... Tina says Stadium, Boneyard, Firefly, Money in the Bank. This is, yeah, it's all kind of coming together. I'm surprised we're yeah, all on the same page mostly for Stadium. Uh, th I thought we were going to be uh, hitting that a little bit, but but yeah, I guess what I forget who said it, but but I guess that is interesting to take into account the WrestleMania ones mm -hmm. where they probably they didn't make the call on that until probably mm -hmm. very late in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas whereas something like the stadium thing, they probably 
but oh, the, they've the, probably had they've been probably planning it been that for months probably yeah. been thinking Ooh. about it for a while right um yeah. so and and you never know and we we pontificated what was the you know i, I you know is there something along the lines that they were thinking about doing something in the stadium this whole time, but maybe not that since they have access to it. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, this is what we got because of the situation. There's other things that they wanted to do that would have happened and, and you know, double or nothing plans and all that kinds of things. Uh, the, the Vegas props seem weird. Not in Vegas, for instance, mm -hmm. but anyways, with that, I mean, hey, if you ever lived on that, in that part of the country though, you, Maybe have caught a casino boat out there. Yeah, the yes, water. There so, I mean, yeah, the casino go. thing was not completely foreign to that part of the country. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> what are we going to do with all these extra giant poker chips? Well, yeah, because I, <laughs> yeah, I went to school in Mississippi and there weren't any like brick and mortar casinos, I think, at the time in the area. But there were a lot of like, oh, yeah, casino boats right off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was basically like, you know, they were boats in in the way that a houseboat is a boat. It's not really a boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. A, like you hop on this like uh, yeah. I, I, I want to call it a catamaran, but I guess I'll call it a catamaran. Or like a catwalk. But, yeah, to, yeah. And it's it. like yeah. this old rickety boat mm -hmm. with a with a with a level yeah. that you cannot enter until you get out to that part of the ocean. They open it up. It's like slot machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right, <laughs> it is time for our homework assignment. Uh, your <laughs> assignment for this week <laughs> was oh, <laughs> on the groans are starting. It was, <laughs> you can find it legally over at WWE Network. I'm sure it's a bunch of other places too. From the Great American Bash, the, not the Greensboro Hidden Gems, the Great American Bash. It was the Fantastics against the Midnight Express with uh, one Jim Cornette in the shark cage and in the straitjacket. I love that he also needed to be in the straitjacket. I wonder if this is after they already did a cage where he got out or something. Sure. Um, you can never be too careful. Sorry. Before we get to that, and before anything is said on this, I want to I um, prerequisite this in this discussion. In reference to Jim Cornette, because I know there's people that have uh, uh, thoughts on Jim Cornette. Mm -hmm. I want people to disqualify what he said lately on his podcast or Twitter we were talking about 1988 Jim Cornette, Cornette as a wrestling um, personality, not yeah. Yeah. Dark Side of the Ring Jim Cornette, not to, podcast to fair, Twitter. I, I think he still is 1988 Jim. I, 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 I know, I know. He just has more of a platform now. Yeah. Can, uh, can I start out by saying things changed around him, Ronnie? Sorry, Rob, I didn't mean to cut you yeah, off. No, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I just want to start off by saying, as a wrestling manager, Jim Cornette is one of the greatest wrestling managers mm. in pro wrestling history. Uh, his mannerisms, the way he conducted himself, you know, he was probably the most entertaining part of that whole goddamn piece of shit match. <laughs> He and, was pulled up in a ball in the shark cage the whole time, Ronnie. He was and barely was, moving. All right. The first six minutes of him <laughs> arguing with the referee, leading up to them putting the street jacket on and putting him in the cage, him saying, take care of my jacket. My mama gave me that today, just mm -hmm. for today. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> he was screaming for his mama as they raised the cage. Yeah. I was cracking up. I'm like, so, all right, Jim Cornette so, is a great manager. The match, just in general, was awful the ending was terrible you drug a match on that long just so the dude can use brass knuckles like mm -hmm. come on man. It was, but, but the 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 whole and again like kind of jim Cornette's antics kind, kind of raised raised a question to me where um like i hear about it more happening with wwe and maybe later day or you know kind of not end of days wcw but late 90s wcw where where um did they? I wonder. Did they ever run late on shows or think like times run long? Uh, because a couple was, minutes. Because yeah, like you said with Cornette at the beginning of the match, he mugs for like ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and but but the show itself, at least the version we see, it's like two and a half hours. Yeah, maybe. yeah. So they wouldn't have been pushing any sort of like three hour window or. And, but, and, and by the way, the entire cage setup is on this with yeah. bad overdub music. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, that over that. Oh, that music. Skip guys, the entrances. It's, guys, it's guys. like mid eighties fart rock that just kind of. <laughs> it was <laughs> bad. Goes over it. Yeah. Um, guys, Mike? Let, me, let, me, let me tell you about a tag team match I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that I greatly enjoyed. Yeah. Had um, one, one of the hottest young tag teams in the history <laughs> of the sport. <laughs> had one of wrestling's greatest managers 
and another tag team who is underrated, in my opinion. Are you talking about Ocean? Uh, I saw the Rockers versus the Orient Express from Royal Rumble 91. Why would he be mm-hmm. talking about us? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, this, match, this match was a piece of shit. <laughs> it, was, it was just fucking terrible. Like, no, it was. Oh, my God. Like, And again, I know I've said this before. What a WCW finish that was. <laughs> yeah. It was the, and they weren't like, even WCW yet. Oh, I don't think. No, they oh, weren't. No. Like, this is sad. Mm-hmm. This is so, so and, sad. Like, and to kind of bring it home to the match before, like I was watching the whole show. Like this this was what? The US tag belts? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. The, yeah. The world the world tag was right before it. And the world tag in that match had like a total dusty finish. Like yep. it was a time I think it was a time limit expired or yeah, or time limit draw, whatever. Or something like that. So to have on the same show back to back really screwy you know, it's the, like that they had both tag matches back to back anyway, or bet tag title matches, and then to have, have them both end in less than uh clean yeah yeah <laughs> manner you know it's, yeah the, the one before was a time limit draw yeah because because nikita and sting were like putting on the belts and the mm. refs like no oh, no no you know <laughs> well so now you had <laughs> again this second match where the you know the faces got screwed because somebody had a you know did the whole look i'm wrapping a chain around mm-hmm. <laughs> around my mm-hmm. hand by the way the presentation of the chain was nice yeah. um there, there's and go ahead and then God. the goofy ass cage match right after that. So it's, it's yeah. Can we talk a... about that instead? <laughs> oh no no no. no, 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 no. We will. No, 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 no. We will. We will. But first of all, climbing a triple cage. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get that. Hold off on that. We need to stay <laughs> stay on task, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, this I, I, what would the professor so, say if we were going off task like this? Exactly. He gave us an assignment to do. do oh, I'll, I'll tell the professor exactly what he can do with his task. Wow. The professor and I have heat, man. This is this is real heat. So, so other than that, I, I, I and I, I started discovering this as I started digging through like Smoky Mountain Wrestling when it started coming on the network and everything. I am mm-hmm. familiar with Jim Cornette as '90s WWF Jim Cornette, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's quote unquote my Jim Cornette. Like I remember when he's coming in with a Yokozuna and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know this Jim Cornette that is the Mama's Boy. Mm-hmm. That so I. I this is new to me and enjoyable some, or at least curious, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, because you know, the whole, like, you know, what, what, was, what were you saying before the mom gave me that jacket last night or something, yeah. you yeah. know, and, 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 and I didn't have my cookies and milk last night or, or, and stuff like that. Like, this is fascinating. Um, um, Southern <laughs> persona <laughs> analysis <laughs> right here. Oh. Everyone hates their mothers. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you, you never you never saw masked cornet then, have you? Masked cornet. What? No, no. He like I forget. It was like a. You know, it was. I, I think he had his hair sh- head shaved or something after a match. And this is like this. And this is like earlier, like mid eighties. Well, I mean, this is late eighties, but it was it was Good even look. earlier where where he he wore a mask <laughs> for a while just because his head what? was shaved or something like that. Uh, totally so, Google it. So it popped up as a random like I was I don't know if it was something on the network or if it was one of the other like there's like this wrestling channel on Roku that shows just random shit where it's it just comes up and like Jim Cornette's wearing a mask and I'm like I got to see what this is about. <laughs> but but yes there was a short kind of like Remember when CM Punk wore a mask for like three weeks? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because he had his head shaved. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's yeah. like that where you would just see that and be like, "What is the? Yeah, when was this? You know." I, I love you. You like basically image search anything Cornette and you get G Ravers T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, that's great. Yeah, a little Streisand effect there. Um, yeah. I... Oh, sorry, I feel like I got to jump in here. Oh, Matt, we didn't get okay. you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, go ahead, Matt. Okay. Oh, I've, let, I've, I've let the boys have their fun. Show, show All right. Jim Cornette. Evil, uh, evil Mirror <laughs> Universe. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> mainstream Matt. I don't believe that T-shirt exists. Um, I'm coming oh, to the Mirror Universe to tell you all I like this match. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I like this match. I'm gonna need you to grow your main beard back. Reason so. that I like match. this match. match. I have not been exposed very much to, if at all, to the Fantastics. I know literally mm-hmm. nothing about that. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with Tommy Rogers during this match. <laughs> I fell in love. I love him, and I want to see more. And um, after I saw him, you know, basically 
<laughs> compete for what 90% of this match before lazy ass Bobby Fulton finally got in. <laughs> um, and, and he was, I had to go and go ahead. I was gonna say, and he's fascinating because he's the only guy in the match that's not a blonde with a mullet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I but can I mean, like, I, yeah. I mean, just like, I don't know. He was doing all this cool stuff. He's doing like, you know, flipping out of moves, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, it just looked awesome. Great drop kick. I mean, all this great stuff. Um, so I really got into it. I went and I tried to look up more about him because I like, like I said, I know nothing about the Fantastics or Tommy yeah. Rogers, yeah. and uh, come to find out that he's no longer with us, which is sad. But that. Um, uh, he he did some Japan, and he actually was involved in the very early days of ECW. And if his Wikipedia is to be believed, um, apparently Tommy Rogers may have invented the unprettier, Whoa. He, aka the kill switch, the, Tomic so, the, 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 the Tamakazi. Yeah, yeah. Tomikaze. So uh, Tommy F and Rogers uh, put this over the top for me. Sorg, you don't have to couch it. Jim Cornette in this time is a great <laughs> mm -hmm. wrestling mm -hmm. manager, a great yes. personality. Mm. The crowd hates him. The Mama's Boy stuff is great. Um, and uh, I even started to like Stan Lane a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I didn't mind the finish as much as you guys did. <laughs> I just kind of watched it and I said, well, I guess they had to get the belts off these guys. Hey, so no, I, 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 And I... I, I also I want, I want to say I, I mistook the Fantastics with I think the Fabulous Ones, mm -hmm. which, which ironically is the team that Stan Lane was on before <laughs> the Midnight Express. So hey, it's hey Matt, so there I was a crazy with, like 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 snake eating its own tail thing going on during yeah, this yeah. time yeah. period during the eighties where everyone's doing like derivatives of the Fabulous Ones and the Rock and Rolls and yeah. the Midnight Express, and they're just like repeating his stuff so do you have like the fantastic ones and then you have the fantastics and you have the fabulous ones and you've got yeah. the and then all this other stuff gets jumbled you got the rock and rolls and the rockers you got you know it's just it's a mess yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, matt, matt um what? if you want more tommy rogers mm -hmm. um i don't know if this exists on youtube his last match was in 2005 i believe it looks like royal rumble weekend it's a four on three handicap match. The Rock and Roll Express and the Fantastics mm. against the Midnight Express. Nice. Like all of them. But, yeah. It, yeah. It's Ricky that, that, Robert, Bobby and Tommy <laughs> against Bobby Eaton, Dez Codry, and Sweet Sam yeah. Lane. Because that, that list of Midnight Express, when I checked out that Wikipedia, was uh, deep. Uh, yeah. Rob, go ahead, Rob. <laughs> go ahead, Rob. Speaking, speaking of the Rockers, though, when you mentioned that, it's like, Again, to show how much of a knockoff each of these were, it's like the Rockers were originally the Midnight Rockers, mm -hmm. yeah. which is mm -hmm. the Midnight Express. And well, that's the because Rock the, the Rockers <laughs> were in Smoky Mountain. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Rockers like, were in Sm so it wasn't like a ripoff. It was it was Cornette ripping off his own stuff. Yeah, it was everything was like, Midnight it, Rock and Express. Too, there, are, there are three yeah. tag team gimmicks during the mid '80s, and you've got to get one version of it. They just like yeah. stir it all together, and yep. like whatever comes out, yep. you're going to get one version of this. Yep. Oh yeah. um, anyway, wow. I even um, found a, uh, an old YouTube where um, like Rob Van Dam sits down and has like a little chat with uh, Tommy Rogers for like ten minutes. It's really cool. You can tell like Rob actually respects mm -hmm. Tommy, and Tommy was you know living great, enjoying his life. He had moved to Hawaii, and uh, you know it, it's really cool to like have someone kind of like grab you like that. So yeah, now I'm gonna I'll be off into a Tommy Rogers rabbit hole here. So, I, I'm, so I'm report looking back. at Tommy Rogers match listings on Cage Match. Mm -hmm. um, Tommy Rogers had a match in ECW against Dr. Luther. There it oh. is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I heard that he was, um, that during uh, maybe like 98 ECW, he was teaming with Jerry Lynn. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he went on to like do some agent work backstage for ECW. So he's, you know, might have had who knows how much to do with the development of some of those guys mm -hmm. coming up. It's really interesting. So, Matt, Matt you yeah. want to go, go to Raw is War. <laughs> episode number 214 mm, yes tommy rogers versus bobby fulton yes i heard about this one i did hear about this while i was looking stuff up yeah was that was that during the ecw invasion no i believe it was during the smoky mountain invasion oh okay. boy I think, they, I think they brought them in to like to be... work their light heavyweight division yeah. for like a match and that was but, it so. but i think so that happened around three the same minute time, yeah yeah <laughs> 
So okay, so so we got some notes here. I got my own notes that I have not gotten to Sorry. yet. We have the chat room what? notes as well. Uh, Tina's letting us know. Oh shit! You should watch Memphis Wrestling in Mid South Cornet. Uh, Mid South is where he got his head shaved. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Also, Marty Janetti and Tommy Rogers were a tag team in Central States Wrestling back in the day, tying a lot of that <laughs> together. Uh, and Cubby, not is sure al- I'm going, but Cubby is also <laughs> uh, iterating Memphis <laughs> Memphis Cornet. It, it yeah, was I the best. Yeah. Uh, I have my notes, so follow okay. follow along with me, please. Um, okay. uh, I, I I noticed that I would not be okay being in the cage myself because uh, I'm afraid of heights, so would not be okay with that. Um, Matt, I don't know if you noticed uh, the exposure being adjusted in the middle of the match. <laughs> I just, <laughs> like they were having some issues and i'm just <laughs> like wow this is like one of the biggest events from one of the biggest companies in the 80s okay um but the audience i know notice how far away the audience was was kind of interesting uh it feels kind of how new japan does it even still today uh with that uh because yeah, the i guard did rate. notice the complete absence of padding around the ring that was oh like, yeah just like enjoy the concrete <laughs> well, floor yeah, to that he did <laughs> does that power <laughs> slam with him hanging on the ropes right to the floor like and that's he, if you don't hit a chair on the I, way I, down. I i felt that <laughs> that was rough yeah. oh my uh, god yeah. that was like uh, well let, let me see if you mention it during your notes and i'll, okay, I'll okay. mention one more thing if you um get uh the power slam the uh I, this felt like to me, for my perception going into an '80s match. This felt like a really high movement uh, 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 '80s match. You know, like there were points where they really got going, and like you said, with the flips and everything like that. You know, if, '80s, you know, but uh, at least mm-hmm. as far as that goes, I really enjoyed that. Um, I felt like we got right into a headlock move pretty quick, but we didn't stay in it as long as it felt like uh, hmm. that we were going to. Because I'm like, oh, great, there'll be a headlock. Like the crowd is eating it up because. That's what we're 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 at with crowds and everything, and they they are they're in that believing that running that guy to fight out. Uh, but but it it was a lot again a lot more action than I expected for an '80s tag team express fabulous whatever they're called uh, uh, kind of match. <laughs> fantastic, uh, fantastic <laughs> express match. Team, the fantastic team, uh, express, yeah. Team fantastic. Um, uh, it's like the worst Fantastic Four spinoff. Yeah. So, like, so just... <laughs> n- knowing especially, you know, a little bit about how what we deal with the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission, hearing about when New Orleans, Louisiana, Louisiana Athletic <laughs> Commission, things like that, you know, kind of pay attention to those a little bit more because of yes. circumstances. There was a point in this where they pointed out yes. and then showed, <laughs> follow along with me, the Maryland Athletic Commission, um, <laughs> who apparently at some point approved the shark cage <laughs> yes okay uh, roll with me here so yeah, yes. your athletic commission this is the same commission the very same commission that is there taking weights at a boxing match and making sure you don't have shit on your gloves and face for a boxing yeah. match who approved a straight jacket and shark cage for a manager to be suspended 30 30 feet how, how high was he too much. Could have been too, at least fifty. Too high. Too, high for, like too high for me. Too high for me. Ten feet. Six feet. Six feet equals fall protection. If I remember my safety videos were uh, uh, from the from the two thousands I worked on correctly. Uh, oh, safety. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's a crossover, OSHA. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so so I just. That they gave a lot of love to the athletic commission in these shows, and and I think they generally did a lot uh, uh, amongst, especially NWA early WCW, uh, when when you watch these big shows. Um, but uh, that just kind of stuck out for me. Also, I've never seen like a shirt take a, sh- a referee take a shirt off to to adjust for an eye gouge. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like and, why is it, and, like he got hit in the eye? Why is he taking his shirt off? So. <laughs> The uh, the first and last time you've ever seen a professor. It's like, <laughs> so, and, well, so it's, it's okay. The, then they suspended him from the top of the cage. The next match, Rob, go ahead. So it's funny that they would approve, yeah, approve the cage and straight jacket and stuff. But like, when you combine them, if the cage were to fall and he's restrained <laughs> by his straight jacket, he can't even. I, that's a thing. Protect himself, right? If, right? Yeah. <laughs> if if he does, he does. Yeah, so- he can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's, he could free fall uh, and just yeah just have to eat it so so there's that so that was fun uh either way like it or hate it 
I think we learned a lot, and now uh, 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 evil uh, mainstream Matt is going to be going on a Stan Lane uh, <laughs> line. No, 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 don't get don't get it twisted, Sorgi. I mean, I like Stan Lane plenty. You know, he was all right. The one who talks um, on the Midnight Express, as opposed to silent mute Bobby Eaton. He's but, the road um, dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Stan Lane, <laughs> Mister Charisma. Um, but um, I don't, you, you know, as you mentioned, there are multiple great American bash paper mm-hmm. games that you can stumble into. I don't know if I was watching the Greensboro Hidden Gems version or if this actually happened in the actual match we were supposed to watch. But there was a <laughs> moment in one of these matches where the Fantastics get a steel chair. They unfold it. They place it in the middle of the ring, as you would if you were going to have someone sit in it, as a normal person would do. Mm-hmm. One of them hoists up Bobby Eaton and gives him an atomic drop, except he lands butt first directly onto the seat of the chair. Mm. Completely safe, right? Like mm-hmm. the least harmful high spot. Bobby Eaton's like, ah, my, he's like dead. The crowd's going berserk for this. I'm like, what a great, they need to bring this one back, you know? <laughs> safe, you know? There Good you go. pop. There you go. Please tell me he said have a seat after you gave him the atomic drop. I couldn't hear the audio mm. as uh, Sorg alluded mm. to the. Pr- Television and audio production was not quite there. No. But you know what? There, the, the the live event, I mean, the, you could tell the crew. I mean, I'm sure Sorg was just like staring at that Tower of Doom setup. Oh, my God. You know, for the oh whole time, God. just like I was. I, I w- They're out there with the ladders and everything. Those, yeah. those boys were working hard. So, I, yeah. I want to get to the Tower of Doom. But in the meantime, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we had some fun here. But we do have another assignment ready for us from <laughs> Jacob Edwin. So Fuck here... <laughs> This fucking guy. Here we <laughs> go. Here we go. Come on, 1960s. I don't know why it's play- not playing. Hooray! No oh, no. <laughs> oh, assignments canceled. Let's all have class. Same. Time. School's yeah. out. Oh, no. There's no audio. Hold on. Feature. We'll fix it in post. It's okay. We'll fix it in post. My live spot messed up. Why isn't this Hold working? on. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, hold on. Oh, reaction. Oh, uh, that match is terrible. How about uh, that? Assignment, huh? I don't want to rubble, 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 rubble. Jesus. USWA. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it's not playing. I don't know what's happening right now. Ten oh, more okay. years back into oh, the past. There, it is. there we go. There we go. We're okay. Back in Don't worry. Time. Nobody, oh, nobody that yeah. watches this later will see this part. And here Great. you go with your assignment, okay. as be. if it never happened. <laughs> Hello, Wrestling Mayhem Show. My name is Professor Jacob Edwin. This week's assignment. I'm going to keep it short and sweet and to the point. If you don't like this next assignment, there's something wrong with you. I thought it would stop beating around the bush. CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan, champion versus champion, February 24th, 2012 on SmackDown. They had a lot of matches this year. Um, I decided to just kind of pick one. This one, you're going to see a lot of play back and forth as far as outside interference or uh, stopping and starting. Um, But you also get a lot of wrestling. Like a lot of really good wrestling that you can study and actually learn from. I doubt any of you will learn anything from it, but uh, maybe it'll luck out and by osmosis you'll actually gain a little bit of knowledge. I doubt it. You'll probably just be bitter and tell me how bad the match is, but I don't care. I know it's good, and I know I'm better for it. So learn or don't. Thank you. You're not welcome. This Listen, one doesn't oh, sound okay. like it has any fair uh, pages. Sorry, okay. it sounds like I've already got a failing grade in this class. <laughs> well, as as a CM Punk mark, I will watch this match. I, I think I actually remember this match. So yeah. yeah, because this is around the time that that infamous photo was taken, where like Punk was champion, Brian was champion, Cody was champion, Kofi was champion, like Zack Ryder. I think it was around that time where mm-hmm. that 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 very famous photo was taken. So nice. yeah. This should be fun. All right, there you go. Okay, extra credit. Let's let, let's talk about that damn cage match because I know because it was fuck. the next one. It was a tower of doom. It was a three tier cage. You actually climbed a ladder on the outside and entered war game style, two people at a time, and you had to work your way down into the cage 
down and uh, okay wait every two minutes a door oh, wait 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 uh, so every two minutes a door would open getting you down down a level to the next ca- uh cage that you can tr- try to get in that door is only open for 10 seconds and mm-hmm. there's four on four five on five i think um, five on five five on five, on five. And you have to get down to the main ring cage and uh, ask ring. Precious to let you out of the cage. Because yeah. she has the key. Um, and she's in oh the ring. Man. This was part Ray to Rumble, part Punjabi prison, mm-hmm. part terrible wrestlers. And I hate and I love <laughs> and And it was like, it's like the door is open for 10 seconds or until Ronnie Garvin finally gets into the goddamn door. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they're getting hung up a lot. They're getting hung up a lot. 30 seconds to get down that. They take like one of the oldest guys in the match. (laughs) Because he was hands of stone, but ass of lead. (laughs) um, Also, I, I think like, Animal Road Warrior Animal had one of the coolest paint jobs I've ever seen him. Mm. I thought it was a mask. Yeah, I thought it, it was a mask because it looked kind of like a Spartan helmet, kind yeah. of the sharp, like a lot of angles on it. But that has to be one of the coolest paint jobs I've seen mm-hmm. on Animal ever. It looked fantastic. Yeah, like, I thought I thought it was a legit mask. Like there was a gimmick where he had had his nose broken or something like that. But I'm like, no, that's just paint. Yeah, because mm-hmm. the wider that's looking. Because on the wider shot, it just like pops. Yeah, <laughs> it, it almost looked like what he should have looked like in LOD two thousand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so th- this was I, I I was I was thinking I was messaging in in, in Slack or something like this was a wild yeah. match. Like this really was kind of a wild match. Uh, uh the way it was. I mean, it, it, and of course everything is shot from like wide far away shots zoomed in yeah. because you can't get a camera anywhere with a 1988 uh liability uh and technology right yeah. uh, so we didn't have zoom cameras at this time uh, it, it was it was it was it, you know that whole thing like everybody working through and everybody was eating it up but the, also the thing happened where there would be a big move and then it took a mm-hmm. second for the crowd to kind of react to it I thought it was interesting. I don't know because it was the cage and people needed a second to register what they were seeing through the cage or catch the thing or their buddy saying, did you see what animal did on, on level two or something? But, but like there was a delay in everything, but everybody just went insane. Rob, that top level was in the lights. It was. You could know, <laughs> even you, said it. You wouldn't yeah. be able to say, yeah. And they say it's like, you know like they they were commenting about like something tommy rod like his drop kick, like oh my god he jumped in the lights so you know he's like but no this match they are literally in <laughs> yeah you saw the, the lights the cam so lights were hanging down below the top of the cage yeah. <laughs> so so that had to be like you couldn't you i mean from the crowd you probably couldn't see that top cage if no. you were up hard high enough no. well, or if you were down too low unless yeah. you were like level with it well, so, and it was probably hot those are cam lights <laughs> Yeah, and like Tommy Young had to be dying up there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and, and, uh, and, and I think they started off with, like I said, it's funny. Yeah, you got like Ronnie Garvin, who's probably the oldest guy in the match at the point, or at that point. I think they intentionally did start off with like him and Ivan Koloff just because they were just the two oldest fuckers out there to, to, <laughs> get, them, mm-hmm. to get them through. <laughs> yeah, first one's out the door, I think. Ronnie was the just first. Get- I'm like, oh, short night for Ronnie. Yeah, just to get them down and out. And it I always is, guys. Always <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then we got to like the end where you you got like Kevin Sullivan he uh, uh, shoves other gar other Garvin brother out. Uh, yeah. So he, he he locks the door behind him and has time alone with Precious to stalk her. And then you yeah. have the crowd is insane. Everybody mm-hmm. is scrambling. You know, emergency. Uh, uh, Garvin climbs all the way to the top and back down through the cage again to save <laughs> that her. On the painter's ladder. On yeah. the painter's ladder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was it was just like nuts. Yeah. I, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Did they just not trust any of them to be able to climb up the actual fence wall? I I don't think at that point, no. We, we, this isn't like, you know, after this isn't post 1998 fully climbing the cage. Yeah, but, right? you know, like, but they've had cage matches where people will climb the cage walls at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I listen. But also, have you seen the videos where most of the people in that match are very coked out through most of that tour? Or just, exactly, they wouldn't feel the pain anyway. Oh, yeah. Or they were, or they were just like such big dudes. Yeah, too. yeah. You know, it's it's that they, they 
you had like Doctor Death and the Road Warriors, and again, like Ivan Koloff and you know guys that aren't known for. They're not. They're not cruiserweights. Yeah, they're not. I mean, they're agile in their own sense, but not like. And, and they're know, not they Undertaker. Go, they're very not Undertaker. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, can uh, does anybody know where I can find like an old school wrestling match where somebody actually does a suicide dive? <laughs> like, did they do suicide dives back then? Um. The earliest I remember seeing it, I actually just saw it recently on Rumble 91. Yeah. Okay. Rumble 91, the Rockers, the Orient Express, a match I was Makes sense. joking about that I saw. That, by the way, all right, that that's a good match. Like You've yeah. probably heard of that match before. Because mm-hmm. I was watching that pay-per-view over the weekend because why not? It's the Rumble 91. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a match on there that was a banger, and I did not expect it. Big Boss Man versus the Barbarian. Oh <laughs> yeah, like dude, like didn't expect it at all. Holy shit, Paul! Yeah, so was was Boss scary. Man was Boss Man just like recently turned face by that point? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, er, er, early scary. early nineties face Boss Man was pretty fucking rocking. Like yeah, him, and, th- him yeah. and perfect. Fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, because I was going to say, because I think he was kind of wrapped up a little bit in like the Million Dollar Man Virgil stuff or something, too, mm. where or, or maybe not like it was or he was hired by Million Dollar Man to like get the belt back or something. Yeah. And yeah, then, and then yeah. he got stiffed him or something like that. Yeah, maybe that was maybe that's what it was. It's like like it didn't go through, got slapped and and, and said, I'm or, done with this. Or it might have been Dusty at that point. Was, Could be. was Dusty still around? Yeah, that might. Yeah, been Dusty him. was involved in the whole Ted DiBiase stuff. Yeah, yeah. Man, those were the days. Uh, you know, hey, either way, whether you guys, wh- how much you may shit on the professor's picks for matches, I think it's it's led to some good discussions and and other side discoveries here. Uh, so I, I think this has been a, a pretty fun so far. But in the meantime, hey, it's time. Hey, Sorg, um, yeah. Professor Edwin may hate me now. Yes. but I love this segment. So this has been a lot of fun, <laughs> and I do enjoy watching these old matches. Fantastic. I, I'm I'm interested in seeing what pops up on the rest of that 2012 SmackDown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to that this week. We'll put a link uh, to the WWE Network link, at least, uh, of where you can find that show and that match uh, it, uh, to yeah, do that. It's on February 24th. Yes, February 24th, 2012. But we'll get all that mm-hmm. in line for you. Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week in chat room? Please chime in as well. Who wants to go first? All right, Sorgi, I'll go first. All right. Uh, there was a... And then this is more less of a thing that I learned this week, but more of an important thing to remember and be reminded of. Uh, there was an unfortunate incident um, earlier this week in which uh, one of our podcasting brothers, although we won't claim him anymore, said something inappropriate about a professional wrestler, got called out for it, and now has been forced, been shamed on social media as as you do. Um, and so it's uh, like I said, it's just an important thing to both uh, learn this week and to be reminded of that um, you know. There might actually be other wrestlers, <laughs> not other wrestlers, but real wrestlers, actually listening to the things that you're saying. Uh, so just keep that in mind whenever you're podcasting from either a beautiful space like this or perhaps from the comfort of your own basement, that indeed, yes, your words might be heard by the people that you're actually saying things about. So, Yeah, Ronnie. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, Ronnie. But <laughs> who did I piss off now? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about Ronnie, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> uh, what about you, Rob? What would you learn? I learned this week I've been going through the Pillman Memorial shows mm-hmm. from 98, 99, 2000, 2001 as part of a, a an upcoming project. And uh, I'm learning just now what a big deal those were mm-hmm. back in the day just to get everybody on the same page to kind of make those <laughs> those happen and how stacked those shows were. Yeah, yeah. Was it basically like Battle of the Network All-Stars but for wrestling? Well, it was like the like ninety eight. You had a couple of yeah, you know, like Stone Cold was on the ninety eight show. I mean, not, not wrestling, but like you know, as as just kind of a guest and and talking to the crowd like a month after WrestleMania fourteen. Wow, you know, wow. So, wow. And, and then and and then you so that was like the peak of of uh you know kind of uh his ascension, you know, <laughs> to to be yeah. the main guy. And it was I think like Sonny was the other. WWF person on the show, and then you had like Jericho and Benoit were, were main evented it, and of course they'd always had good matches together. Um, and then you had guys like you know Chris Candino and Al Snow, but then it got 
even bigger bigger the la- next couple of years and it was yeah you had people from all three companies until that last one where it was like fall of 2001 where it was all under the wwf umbrella but even the main event of that one was the hardys versus edge and christian versus ddp and canyon like Jeez. in the middle of the invasion stuff you know Jeez. yeah so that's, that's like, a match we wish we got in the invasion yeah so it's it, it was like just crazy it's like yeah and, and i i think there were at least a couple thousand people at that at that last one mm-hmm. and then on the undercard on the indie showcase was john cena versus randy orton <laughs> so uh, <laughs> like right about a, a about a year before they hit tv you know they wow. would have been doing obw at the time yeah so it's yeah just seeing just like how stacked those well, shows were because well, you only really hear about a couple of them or a couple of the matches you yeah. know like the 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 benoit regal from 2000 they kind of got mm-hmm. regal his job back yeah and you saw yeah. and you also saw uh, uh from the heartland uh dvd yeah. that dombrowski did i work uh mm-hmm. wrestling from the heartland uh the, the brian pillman uh, memorial that's all going to be available in in due time uh well mm-hmm. heartland's available now indie wrestling.us and uh pro wrestling library.com joe dombrowski and i'm and mm-hmm. i'm finishing up the pillman interview right now yeah i'm, so. I'm, I'm sure i'll see a dvd uh, uh yeah. request <laughs> soon for that uh, once mm-hmm. I get to this other project that's been on my plate, uh, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. There's no wrestling. I'm not traveling yet. I'm losing as much sleep as ever, uh, for I've, work. So it's I'm weird. watching it's more nineties. I'm watching more nineties wrestling now than I am, than I was back in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ronnie, what'd you learn? Uh, that MGF or MJF is a national treasure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't care where this MJF hate comes from. Like not hate as in hating him because he's a heel, hating, hating him because he's MGF, MJF apparently. Like I, I don't get that. He's overhyped. But, but yeah, that but right man, there. But exactly. Case and point. No, that he's way. Overhyped. No, that way. No, no, well, no. Hey, where's this camera? I don't know. He's like number two heel at the age of 23 on a, yeah nationally televised wrestling promotion that seems pretty legit <laughs> and, and our and our boy Ward, our, our boy wardlow's got like the easiest gig on tv right now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aaron, 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 stop <laughs> calling him the biggest the world's biggest ring bearer yeah that's yeah, not that exactly that's that not exactly weird. promoting him well no 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 uh it sounds like he works weddings matt you what'd know? you yeah, learn exactly. <laughs> <laughs> matt what'd you learn I already told you what I learned. Oh, Mike, what'd you learn? I'm sorry. I, I hit the wrong square. That's okay. <laughs> um, I learned that um, WWE is saying that if people need to break up a fight, if you're in the crowd from now on, you can just run in. <laughs> That's an unfortunate precedent. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. How did they jump the barrier? How did they jump the plexiglass barrier? <laughs> they yeah. ran around it. I think they like somehow like transported themselves through it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I also learned um, if you're on the internet, don't be an asshole. Just, yeah. mm-hmm. just like, like if you have something shitty to say about someone that you don't know, mm-hmm. that's, not, that's not talking about a product. It's talking about a specific person. If you have something shitty to say about that person, think on it for a half a second. <laughs> say it out loud to yourself. Hell, say it out loud to someone you're quarantined with. If you're not quarantined with anyone, talk to the dog. Call some, crash a Zoom chat. Just <laughs> say it to random people and see the kind of reaction you get. Then maybe think twice about posting it because this is a hard time for everybody. Mm-hmm. Everyone. Everyone is going through their own shit right now. We don't need to pile on. Because it can have serious consequences, and in some cases, dire consequences. So just be a fucking person. Be a fucking person. Be a real, legit, good person. That's what I learned. I already knew that, but I, it felt, I, need, I relearned it. Oh, yeah. I don't want to follow that up. Zero tolerance. Yeah. If you think they're worth a mute, block them. If you think they're worth a block, report them. Block and report. Lock and report. And, and, and Don't let these people oh, just forget. linger around in the shadows. There's yeah. someone who there's someone on Twitter. I've seen it pop up a bunch of times. I forget who it is, but talking about a quality filter on Twitter, mm-hmm. utilize it. Yeah. Fuck them. This, this is exactly why I quit Twitter. Because yeah, uh, I don't blame well, you. All that negativity, it's bad. Mm-hmm. And when we come on here and we when we like rip 
in the people. We're just joking. We're not yeah, literally. This is a gimmick. Yeah, this is a gimmick. Like, <laughs> like I'm. Ta- I never talk about specific people except yeah. for people who I think are racist and should stop being <laughs> racist. Yeah. Because, but you know, because racists deserve to be shit on. Like, if you, I, I know who we're talking about. If we. If you go on social media and you literally shit on some poor girl for no reason, like look at look at the consequences. Like a twenty two year old girl committed suicide because you fucking people are just rude as shit. And that's what we're talking about. Like it, such such a great girl was lost because people are assholes. Mm-hmm. It's it sucks, and I'm really glad that the wrestling community has all come together and are mourning this poor girl's loss because it's just. It's bullshit. So, yeah. The real well, question now is will we learn anything from it? Will we actually get better? God, yeah. I hope so. Really do. Well, uh, from the so chat. So, on that uplifting note, uh, Sorgi. Uh, on, on the chat room. First of all, Rob, look out look out for uh, uh, Tina Keys in the in the audience for those Pillman shows, apparently. What's uh, that? Oh. Yeah, look at look at look out for her. Uh, and also, uh, Tina says what she learned is the WWE is a tad few years behind on pay per view hype themes. Apparently, wait, what's the one for this one? I didn't I didn't even know there was a hype. Oh, oh. Like, uh, some Panic at the Disco song oh, from like years ago or something Peter like that. You're literally just looking to license anything that said greatest of all time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a keyword by the search way, at this point. By the way, can we stop with that? Oh. It's not stuff. It's it's not going to be the greatest match of all the time. The other reason a, I can't it's not even top twenty. The other reason I can't <laughs> sit and watch a full WWE program is hearing their horrendous pay per view taglines over and over again. <laughs> so bad. Hey, oh my god! This is what I learned. This is what I learned. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Got there. Hold up. Before I get to that, uh, also Alex in That's California learned that uh, when <laughs> AR Fox wrestles high, he is more crazy. <laughs> Shit. Okay. I'm gonna give send me links. Um, uh, if, <laughs> there was a point in my uh, TV viewing life where I figured out the formula for Law and Order shows and police procedurals. And now I just cannot watch <laughs> one without my skin crawling. Okay. Dun, dun. I attended a television um, messaging um, meeting of some sort about Mont Washington when I started a job, uh, a, a, a client job, like ten years ago, and and realized how a lot of that messaging works. Um, I'll tell you guys sometimes not on a wrestling podcast. Um, WWE. Now I I believe we all suffer from this because we've all watched wrestling forever and kind of can see the threads in the lines and how a a wrestling match works at least kind of storytelling wise that it's super obvious and it's like a grunt all we oh we're doing this again kind of thing but wwe as a program has become the law and order to me i'm I'm afraid and maybe the lack of crowd has exposed that even more as we muscle through the script and that is what's breaking me down right now on watching WWE. And I, I, it's just like the distractions are gone. And all I have is core what WWE is. And I don't think I like it anymore. That's where I'm That's at. good, Sorg. I'm glad. I don't think it's good. Work. I don't think it's a good thing. I, I and, just uh, thought of, I, I mean, it's healthy to let that out. I mean, uh-huh. it's good to, to say it uh-huh. so we can all hear it. <laughs> yeah, good. I, I I just thought of a couple of examples using that law and order formula. You know, like you know how like if if you're in an episode and you're 20 minutes in and they think they got the guy, it's it's, it's like oh no, but wait, there's going to be more twists and turns. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where remember and again, God, this is 20 years ago. Um, the episode of Raw with Triple H and Jericho, and uh, Jericho beat Triple H like a half hour in. Mm-hmm. And and the whole rest of the episode became about, the, you know, basically how they were going to undo everything. Yeah. At well, the, the when Jericho won the WWF title. Yeah. And then, yeah. 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 And it was I was about, so pumped for that. Yeah. You know, where it's like you can't be like, oh, if this happens a half hour into the show, it's going to stay that way, or that's mm-hmm. the solution, mm-hmm. or that's the climax. Yeah. I always you know. feared. Well, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you off. But I always fair. fear the whole money in the bank thing, where like mm-hmm. I'm like somebody who I wanted to be WWE champion finally became champion. I'm like, yes, and I realized I'm like, oh, they're not really going to do it. I think they're going to do. It. And then here comes the person mm-hmm. in the bank. I'm like, come mm-hmm. on, man. And, and they've done it so many times now to where it's like, yeah, you can be like, 
is it going to be A, B, or mm-hmm. C? You know? yeah. uh, it, it, yeah. it, it's more. It's more just the show and the flow mm-hmm. and the and the and the risk is worth the reward. Thanks for telling that completely and actually, yeah. Ray Mysterio. <laughs> Fuck. And even even to the point where they absolutely telegraph the fact that we're going to throw people over off of the roof. Yeah. yeah. And oh then God. completely no sell the fact they got thrown off a of roof. <laughs> uh, Corbin just, literally murdered two guys. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. oh, they'll be fine tomorrow. It'll be all right. Or at least, atten- I, or at least attempted listen, murder. Listen, the yeah. last it's time I saw you, wound, you know? the last time I saw you, you were thrown from a roof and never spoken of again. And literally, Dude. I was worried for Sean Phoenix's mentality when he was on Twitter wondering what happened to Rey Mysterio. And then you just show up tomorrow and say, and say we just start with, hey, there's Rey Mysterio. How you feeling, Ray? But good to be, oh, to oh I'm good, fair. thanks. What the fuck is this? <laughs> to be fair, I'm looking in the wrong scale, camera. On yeah. a scale of attempted murder in WWE, <laughs> it's kind of low. It was no like NWO running somebody over with a truck. It, it's, yeah. no, it's no that. It's no someone ramming into a limo with Bret Hart. It's right. no John Cena trying to blow some up, someone up with pyro. Uh-huh. Like, like, I mean... There was a literal attempt at embalming on an episode of Raw in '98. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what was the like, one like, where not even like a live embalming? And I want to like, roll roll back. I understand. Remember, but- Austin rolled a crippled Vince McMahon to the ring with a gun. Yeah, <laughs> and he pissed his pants. The '90s were a wild yeah. time. <laughs> and also, I understand writers, <laughs> staff. This is stressful times. I get it. I get it. We're all flashing out, and, and and that's that's just where I'm at. And 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 we'll, I'll, I'll see you next. Sorry, month. I'm telling you, just find just find a, an audience reaction track next time no, you it's, watch. It's where week. I'm at. It's on where I'm at, and I'll see you next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I want domination. I want trust the nation. You gotta I'm roll the dice. I'm thinking they need to bust out deadly games again. You know? oh, 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 one more, one more thing, one more thing. Yeah, I forgot. They brought back one of my favorite pay per view themes. The end is near. But <laughs> yes, for the for the Carrion Cross promo. No. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the Carrion Cross and Scarlet did a promo where they said they're gonna like. Go after Champa and whoever else. Mm. And I was like, the end is here. Dude, I popped so hard. No, I popped more. Love yeah. it. Love it. Like, Thank you. There's I'm like, why is that not your theme song? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why? Thank you. Thank if we you. have that in the bank. <sighs> Little. It's like it's like whenever Kane doesn't come out to slow chemical. Yeah. Why are we not doing the uh, best version of what, what we can do? So yeah. so uh, a real a last note before we have to get out of here. Um, one one mark out <laughs> mode for me working on the uh, classic uh, uh, Montreal Theory documentary available at jodenbrowski dot com and indywrestling dot us on the Indie Wrestling Network. Um, he actually Perfect. got the license for the theme song for the Survivor Series pay per view. Oh. Where that happened that we used on the documentary. Yes. And you would know that if y'all watched it. But <laughs> free trial, seven days. Go over and watch it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's like five hours of interviews, but it, like uh Steve Carino's wife liked it, so that means you will too. That was the best that was the best review. That and a heart not liking <laughs> us. Uh but <laughs> Well, right. I mean, there's, there's, there's like a million of them. That's yeah, like that's true. Million. That's true. I it's, mean, you know, I mean, but to know that, like, like you know, they're not all on the same. I, I, you know, when when you hear when you hear a, a heart wife saying those guys, I think it was Brett's wife, and uh, you know, those guys have have some, should have something better to do than bring this up. And I was like, well, stay tuned for the next five years. All right. Anyways, guys, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Please go check check out Ronnie Starks on not the Twitter, but other places um, where he'll be. On the Facebook. We have, and then uh, yeah, on the Facebook and the Zooms. And the Facebook and the Zooms, and then uh, you can also ch- go check out my podcast that I have on the uh, the Facebook. What? Well, it's the wrestling podcast yeah. with me and Tyler Klon. <laughs> that no, I need the, to plug no, more. No, Sorry, the, I don't the, plug that the enough. The action figure podcast. Yeah, I yeah. don't plug that enough. Yes. And uh, find me this weekend. I'll be on Facebook Live for Real Shoot Wrestling. And uh, tomorrow night, I guess I'll be on the Zoom. Well, I'll be holding a camera 
filming the, uh, you the be, show. On you can be show. on the Zoom uh, critiquing his shots. Mainstream Matt, you have listened to your parents on Thursday night. Sorgashotmedia.com. Check out the Facebook page for the stream. All true. All accurate. Where Very good. Hot topic will be that facial hair. <laughs> and uh, we might even talk about Memorial Day cookout. If he Fantastic. thought the watch party was wild, Sorg. That's right. Memorial Day cookout. <laughs> mm. uh, that 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 I really hope the facial hair is starts with. I watched this YouTube video, like when we talked about how you you cut your kid's hair last week, uh, and you said I wa- I watched a YouTube video for a while and thought I could do it. So, <laughs> are you implying that I didn't do it? Okay. I feel really? like you were drunk and you were like, this looks like a good idea. And then you just, you just, they're taking bets at the moment. I'm Memorial not bringing material part. on this podcast. So I guess for the That's list, right. That's your tease. Podcast. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Again, go check yes. out his work, uh, basically all over the indie wrestling us network. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're on camera it's, all over the place. And, and more. And, and again, over on Joe Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, watch I'll out. Be, I'll, watch out for I'll, his I'll cameos leave. on Southpaw and, uh, the outsiders. Uh, <laughs> which, which are probably on Amazon. Yeah, or, yeah. There you, know, you go. Hulu or something at this point. There you, know. you go. I, I'm I'm in a Richard Jewell TV show. Not not the movie, but whatever the TV show version of oh, it was. Oh, okay. That I don't even know where the hell it's. It was, <laughs> it was on whatever. I don't know if it's like AT and T or whoever's. It was it was exclusive to a cable system. Oh no! But oh but no! I'm sure it'll, which but I, I, it was originally supposed to be on Netflix, and maybe it'll end up on Netflix at some point. But I don't oh, know. Geez. I'm like a cop in three different <laughs> episodes or so. If, a cop, if you see a cop so, in the background, and I'm are like, you a cop? Yeah, you have to tell me if you're a cop. <laughs> Matt and Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter. Also t u b i dot tv. Watch yourself some Lucha Underground. It's 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 damn amazing. If you like Stadium Stampede. Learn where they got all this shit from. Yeah, exactly. Uh, where they poached other production people. We'll, yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah. see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait.